Thursday, October 2nd, 2024. Um, this is a hybrid meeting and present uh, we have David Phil, Randy Iser, myself, Molly Keegan, Jane Nevin Smith, and Amy Parsons from the Select Board. Um, I just wanted to make note of the fact that we did have an update to the agenda that was posted yesterday due to an unforeseen item. Uh, the item that was added has to do with um, permission for the fishing derby. So we wanted to get that in this evening. Um, in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 22 of the Acts of 2022, signed by the governor on February 15th, 2022, I announced that this meeting of the select board is being recorded by Hadley Media, the select board's office via Zoom, and ask if there is anyone present who is also recording the meeting. Uh, if no one is recording the meeting, please let the minutes reflect that no one else has indicated that they are recording this meeting. Okay, so um, we actually have a few appointments this evening. Um, so we have three consultants or consulting firms um, who uh, perhaps will be helping us conduct the search for a new town administrator. Mike, do you want to? Yeah, so um, your first appointment uh, right here at 6 p.m. is uh, Bernie Lynch, Mr. Bernard Lynch from mm -hmm. Paradigm Associates. Uh, Paradigm Associates is located in Plymouth, Mass. And um, he and I, he was uh, one of the three com the original companies that I reached out to. Uh, I was very interested in, uh, in helping the town and so essentially, we brought out here today to answer any questions that the board might have. And Bernie, I don't know if you want to go through an overview first, or if you want to just field questions from the board. Um, it's kind of your pleasure. Sure. Uh, good evening. Uh, glad to be here. And uh, I'm joined by John Petrin. And I can see that uh, one of your other consultants is logging on uh, now. Um, but uh, let me... Um, let me talk a little bit about uh, Community Paradigm and uh, what, uh, who we are and, and what we've done uh, here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts with regards to uh, town manager and town administrator searches. Um, we were formed uh, approximately 10 years ago, been doing searches for about eight years now. Uh, we're the most active uh, recruiting firm uh, in, the, in the Commonwealth. Uh, having completed over 110 searches during that period of time. Um, as you know, or should know, the uh, the field of municipal management has been um, dramatically changing over the last uh, five to 10 years as uh, one generation of managers is moving out uh, while uh, other uh, generations of managers are coming in. Of course, that's created somewhat of a um, a challenge for communities uh, as uh, it really has become a, uh, a seller's market, if you will, uh, in terms of, um, you know, getting the necessary people in place uh, to fill the, the many vacancies that have, have come up during that period of time with the generational change that's happened. We've, uh, we've done a number of uh, searches out in your particular area. We've done Hamden, Southampton, South Hadley, Palmer, Belchertown, uh, Amherst uh, and Munson, uh, those come immediately to mind. There may be another one, one or two in there that I, I missed. Uh, but um, uh, our process is uh, is uh, pretty uh, cut and dry. Uh, John and uh, and I are former managers, uh, and we would be uh, working on this with you. Um, importantly, we uh, we've been in the uh, the field. We know the the position, what the position entails. We also are very familiar with the um, uh, with the field of candidates that's out there uh, or potential candidates that are out there based upon uh, all of the work that we've done. Uh, you know, when you come across, when you do as many searches as we've been doing, you come across uh, potential candidates uh, and uh, that uh, that apply for positions or are interested in positions. And uh, very frankly, they go into our Rolodex. We're also, because of the number of searches we do, uh, people that reach out to us on a regular basis, uh, because uh, th they're interested in becoming a manager at some point in time, and so we become familiar with their 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 interests and their their possibilities. Uh, both John and I are also uh, involved. In fact, John is the current program coordinator for the Mass Municipal Association Suffolk University Local Government Certificate Program, uh, and in that role, those roles uh, and uh, other academic work we do with uh, 
with Suffolk University, or uh, in my case, the University of Massachusetts uh, at Lowell, uh, and their um, their political science and public administration program, uh, we come across candidates that are uh, or students out there that are interested in moving on in their careers, and we've developed quite a bit of uh, a network of people that are that are interested in these uh, these types of positions. Um, the, uh, the process that we use is uh, we don't go into any community, whether we uh, know the community quite well or not. Um, we don't go in with any sort of preconceived notions. We want to hear from the from the, uh, the select board. We want to hear from the department heads uh, and other stakeholders uh, about what the town needs. What are the current opportunities? What are the current challenges? Um, what are the skill sets that you need uh, for this position? Uh, what is the what are the style that you're looking for? Uh, you as the select board, you're going to have to work with this uh, individual over the course of the next uh, number of years, uh, trying to implement a certain vision for the town. Uh, and you want someone that fits into what you want and need. Uh, so we spend time talking to you. Um, we have uh, a couple of people uh, that are part of Community Paradigm with uh, background in uh, journalism uh, that help us uh, go through that interviewing process and information gathering process and then develop a very robust uh, position statement. And I think if you go on our website, uh, communityparadigm.com, you can see some of the, the work that we do in generating that position statement that really lays out all of the detail that a candidate uh, is looking for uh, in order to determine whether this is, would be an appropriate position for them to apply to. Um, we think it's an important process to go through anyway, just for the town, to really think about what you want, what you need. So we spend time with you doing that. We spend time putting together that marketing brochure, which also then serves as a tool for us to assess candidates and for you to assess candidates. Uh, to make sure that they meet the identified uh, characteristics. Uh, and then we begin our, once that's done, that takes a, a couple of weeks, two to three weeks. Once that's done, we then go into the marketplace. We go in um, with um, utilizing that network of people that we have. We, uh, we have contact information of about 400 uh, people in our database uh, that we reach out to. We obviously advertise uh, at a number of different locations uh, that you, you would obviously assume the Mass Municipal Association, the International City and County Management Association. Uh, we have uh, uh, other um, you know, avenues that we use to uh, sort of spread the word. Uh, we, we reach out to that database that we have, and then we do direct contact. Uh, you know, John, John I'll, I'll jump in what John uh, often describes as our approach. You know, there's sort of two ways of doing this. There's, there's um, trapping and there's hunting. Uh, you know, in, in terms of how you get candidates, uh, trap you just put an ad out there and you you wait to see what you what you catch. Uh, hunting really requires you to know who's out there, what's out there, uh, and going out making making that outreach and uh, getting people to apply for the position and trying to develop the most uh, uh, most robust pool of candidates that you can. Uh, we bring that whole process of. Uh, following the um, information gathering and the, uh, you know, the, the posting of the position, the actual uh, average, uh, recruitment period, we generally recommend a four week period. Um, once that four weeks are complete, we will then sit down with, we assume that you'll want to use a screening committee, but if you're not interested in using a screening committee, we can, we can work with you in a, a couple of different formats, but uh, we would then bring those uh, resumes to a screening committee, work with the screening committee to help understand the, your applicants, help you narrow down the pool to the candidates that would be interviewed by the screening committee uh, and the, as semi-finalists, and then um, uh, you know going um, uh, sort of going through the interview process, uh, working with them on the interview questions, uh, and then we. Um, uh, you know, determine the ones or they determine who would be finalists brought into the uh, to select board. One thing that we do a little bit differently than perhaps at that stage than other um, firms uh, is we do extensive, we do preliminary background checks right up front. Uh, we, because we know the candidate pool, uh, we were able to tell the screening committee uh, about any, you know, any information about the, the potential candidates that are coming forward. Uh, and then sort of work with them to understand those issues. Uh, but then once the semifinal, once the final, excuse me, once the finalists are picked, 
Um, we then move forward to do a more complete background check of those finalists. Corey check, educational verification, employment verification. Uh, and then we spend time uh, with uh, interviewing the, um, the references that are provided to us and other people that we, we may know of that uh, know these candidates. Uh, we, those, those interviews of those references uh, take uh, generally uh, a greater length of time than the actual interview of the candidates themselves. I often describe it as the interview of the semifinalists takes about an hour uh, that we do with the screening committee. Uh, but then the conversation with the references takes anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes. And you figure that each one has four references. Uh, we're, we're spending two to four hours talking to those references, getting information about the candidates that we then transmit to the board in a reference report to give you uh, a better sense of who these people are, uh, what people say about them, what types of projects they've worked on, what their decision-making style is all about, what their problem-solving uh, style is all about. Uh, and we give that to you with their, their resumes, with their cover letters, uh, and then um, uh, help you through the interview process to uh, make a selection. Uh, all told, it takes 14 to 16 weeks to get all the way through all of this. Um, which in, I think in your case would bring you pretty much to the end of January. Uh, and then you'd be looking at probably having a, um, uh, you know, a new town administrator in place uh, probably by uh, mid-March uh, is what, uh, what, I'm, what I'm anticipating would be your, your schedule. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, if, if I've missed anything, I'm sure John will let me know and he'll jump in. Uh, but we're, we're happy to take take questions for from you at this point. Does anyone have any questions for Bernie or John? How do you figure out the cost for uh, this service? Uh, we have we have a uh, you know based upon the uh, the work that we do, we have a, a general cost of uh, what we think uh, you would. Uh, would be needed to be paid based upon the uh, the the work that we need to do to on your behalf, and then um, the uh, the environment in which we're working in. So, can you provide a general range on that, Bernie? Or um, I understand there are other firms here, so maybe you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a little a little awkward. Uh, you you know, <laughs> particularly when you go first. If you let me, if I had known it was going to be like this, I would have come in last. Um, but uh, I I think I'd prefer at this point. It's uh, I, I it's probably. I think I actually think I told the chief uh, a general figure, uh, and I'd be happy to provide that uh, uh, to you through that. I have that burning, so I can uh, discuss that with George at a future date. And that's a flat rate, no billable hours or anything like that. No, we don't do we don't do billable hours. We also don't do reimbursements uh, for travel or uh, you know if there's unusual copying. Um, we do um, the only the only reimbursable is on the advertising. Uh, you know because if a, if a community wants to advertise. Um, you know, in, in a far more extensive way. Uh, you know, we think the MMMA, excuse me, the MMA and the ICMA is the, the best way to go. We also could distribute it in other means. Um, but as I say, it's more the network of people and the, the number of searches that we've done has given us that that extensive network. Uh, but we don't we don't bill for travel. We don't bill for um, a billable hours. We just give you a flat rate. And, and then the, the reality of that is that uh, if the search doesn't work, the first search, uh, or, you know, the first time we go out uh, and we have to go out back again, we're not going to be billing you up again. It's this all included until we, we get you somebody. Does anyone else have questions? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're in Drake, and that's a distance from here. Plymouth. 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 Sorry. Also a distance from here. Also a distance. <laughs> um, but you would be coming out to help us with interviews and explain yeah. the dates, or would we be doing it remotely? Uh, some of it you'd probably be doing remotely. We we take advantage of the you know uh, the the pandemic. Obviously, it was an, a, a terrible um, thing for everyone to have to go through. Uh, but you know, what one thing that came out of that was an understanding of the use of technology to help uh, 
control costs in something like this and better schedule, better utilize time. Uh, we find that, uh, and John will be doing most of the work on this, and John is in Bolton. He's not in, uh, in Plymouth. I'm in Plymouth. Uh, but So John will be there for uh, certain meetings. Um, but we find that, for instance, speaking with the five select board members, uh, if we can schedule those out over uh, a period of days um, and what works for you uh, based upon your schedules and doing that virtually, um, it, it makes it much easier to get all of that work done expeditiously uh, and more effectively. Um, so we'll be doing some of this by, uh, by uh, virtually, uh, but then doing the actual interviews we would be doing in person. Thank you. Um, I think the only question I have is, uh, you know, you've been talking a lot about your network and, and uh, you know, the trapping and yeah. and hunting uh, scenario. But if there are any internal candidates here who are interested, um, can they be inserted into your process or would you prefer we handle them separately if there are any? No, we, we would. I would prefer that they come through our process. Um that would be I, I that would, that's generally the way we've done it in every other community is really um, uh, it, it's it, let me let me say that there have been a couple of cases one that I'm that comes immediately to mind and maybe John you have another one but I have one that comes immediately to mind um, in which it, someone was inserted uh, sort of after the fact um, and I know in other searches that other uh, have been done by other firms that has occurred on numerous occasions. Uh, it doesn't reflect well on um, sort of the reputation of the community uh, long-term uh, because it's seen that, you know, sort of someone had done an end run and rather than go through the whole complete process. So our preference, actually it's gone through, we've seen it twice now, now that I think of it, John. Um, my, my preference is that they go through the process and uh, we certainly think that, you know, the screening committee should um, pretty much in almost ca every case bring that internal candidate through and let them be interviewed and go through go through that same process. Curiosity question. Sure. Um, I think about apartments. Is there a cost to the candidate? Uh, to apply? Yes. No, no there is not. Okay. Uh, if, if if there's a call, the only the only thing I'll say is that, and this would be a discussion that we would probably have with the town down the road, if the um, so for instance, there's no cost to you know we don't charge people to apply for a job if that's your question, but if there's a if you decide to the screening committee decides to bring in someone from Ohio, and we go to the the board mm -hmm. and say okay, there's a candidate from Ohio, will you will you pay to bring those that person out there, uh, and you say no. Uh, then we would give the candidate the opportunity if they wanted to pay their own way to come out. Um, that would be the only cost, if you will, that a candidate might incur. But okay. other than that, we again, we don't we don't charge people to apply for jobs. Thank you. And the other the other part of that I'll say is just so there's true real clarity on that as well. We don't represent any of the people applying for these jobs. We represent the town. So. If there's any, if anybody has any question like that, we we're we're regularly contacted by uh, applicants. If we can work on their behalf, and we do not, we work on behalf of the community at all times. Any other questions, John? You've got got a minute left. If you want to say hello, John. <laughs> Yes. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Bernie does a great job in presenting for us. I just want to say we have a great team approach to the way we handle the firm. Uh, so Bernie and I, you know, as former managers, we're both involved in a Suffolk program. We're actually out in Pittsfield. Bernie will be in Pittsfield uh, uh, tomorrow teaching uh, for a class. Uh, so we've got 25 students from Western Mass you know, in a class right now. But uh, we also have a couple of people who are communications experts, which is, um, you know, uh, great for our firm. So in developing um, uh, the position statement and so on, we have people who are very good on the communication side. So it's not just uh, Bernie and I, uh, but we've got a couple of ex uh, uh, people who were newspaper people. Um, and uh, these are PR uh, uh, specialists, you know, who assist us in this process. So I think we're a little unique in that area. 
But again, we go out, we make a lot of phone calls. We will get emails out to existing managers and um, um, uh, administrators, you know, in the state. And so we'll be trying to, you know, bring the, uh, the candidates into uh, the town. Okay, great. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you both for your time. Um, you. We'll be taking this up and getting back in touch with uh, everyone shortly. All right. Great. Thank you very much. Great seeing you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Take care. Okay. For our 620 appointment, we have, um, I'm not sure if it's pronounced Gru, uh, Gru White yes. Consult. Okay. And is it Richard? Yes, I'm Rick White. Rick. Okay. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming tonight. Sure. Um, I'm hoping you all got a copy of the proposal that uh, I emailed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I do appreciate the opportunity to meet with you tonight. Um, my name again is Rick White. I'm the principal partner for the consulting firm of Gru White Consulting. We are a full service consulting firm specializing in uh, local government recruitment, as well as evaluating a municipal's, municipality's organizational effectiveness. As a firm, we've been active for uh, 25 years, uh, just this year. Uh, our work uh, is, is focused primarily in Massachusetts, but we have done other New England states. And over the course of those 25 years, we've uh, completed hundreds of uh, very successful uh, recruitments. Uh, we invest a lot of our consulting effort regarding recruitment on understanding the community we serve. Um, we believe an effective recruitment requires more than finding qualified applicants. We go to great lengths to ensure we recommend candidates that fit the community and that are also qualified. This is especially important for a community like Hadley with a small town core, but a presence in a location that can often act a uh, big city. This is a dynamic that uh, requires your next town administrator, not only to be qualified, but also uh, to uh, understand, be sensitive to, and be a great fit for the community. Um, Hadley uh, is uh, very unique. Um, and, you know, the target recruitment that we do here um, would probably focus on candidates with less uh, professional experience than more, given your history of employment and your salary range that you've paid in the past. That may change, and we'll work with you with that. Um, but the dynamic there in recruiting someone with less experience is you probably have a bunch of um, department heads that are well-versed, some of them bootstrap, some of them been around town for a long time, uh, and also very knowledgeable about the town and, and how to operate within it. Finding someone young who's also mature enough, or not young, but uh, is inexperienced, it is also mature enough to interact and work well with senior department heads who are uh, very well experienced, know the community and part of the experience, uh, is a very fine uh, act and uh, requires a lot of digging and a lot of understanding of the community. So finding someone who has the right qualifications in, in experience is not a heavy lift. Uh, finding someone whose style and approach to the work that will gel with the community and the department heads and the elected leadership and the community uh, is going to be a challenge. Um, so how do we go about doing that? Um, I use a metaphor, a farming metaphor. Uh, most of the work uh, in farming is preparing the soil. Uh, and for our recruit, we spend a lot of time in the community preparing the recruit and preparing this uh, soil. We meet early with the select board uh, to get some general direction. Uh, we set up meetings with department heads and organizational leaders, you know, that could be union leaders or uh, someone you designate 
who has a strong presence uh, and force in your organization. And we meet with them between 20 and 40 minutes, depending upon their background and what they um, what what they have to offer. We spend a lot more time with the finance director and the accountant than we do necessarily with the Council on Aging uh, director. Uh, we meet with them to get their feedback as to what they think the organization's needs are, its challenges, and what type of leader manager uh, they believe is needed. Uh, we also ask each select board member to identify two to three community leaders that they believe have important insights uh, into the recruit. Um, having worked in local government, all of us, um, we understand that um, influence in policy and direction uh, identifying needs goes beyond the select board. And there are a lot of people in the community uh, that may have an interest in this recruitment and may have um, uh, some input that would be valuable. Uh, we write up a synthesis on the feedback we receive from each group. We share it with each individual select board member. And then once they've had a chance to review that and understand it, we interview each board member after they receive the synthesis, synthesis to solicit their uh, input. Uh, we then write up a synthesis of the selectman input uh, and in the end, uh, share it with the select board, the search committee if you have one, and uh, some of this, this, the more serious candidates as the recruit uh, matures. We believe this exercise helps us understand Hadley, its governance, its operational co culture, and then identifies important issues needing to be addressed uh, by Hadley's next uh, town administrator. Primarily, this takes us about two weeks. Um, we go nonstop, interview all these people. We write up all these synthesis, and we send it back to everybody we interview and give them a short window to respond to see if we're on target. Uh, this helps us uh, gain a better understanding of Hadley and helps us recruit the right person. Um, simultaneously, while we're doing this, we develop an advertisement and work with the board to identify an advertisement strategy. At a minimum, we recommend uh, the MMA and ICMA job websites. You may have a local uh, periodical that um, you, you need to advertise. And, but I also listed a, a series of resources that we used in the proposal that I gave you. Um, the, from this, I'm sorry, from the synthesis, um, we, uh, develop a brochure or a profile, uh, that can, uh, be mostly a marketing effort. It identifies in brief form, uh, what the town's all about, what you're looking for in a candidate and what some of the challenges are. It's more of a marketing, um, Exercise, we find that uh, busy executives uh, want something quick. Uh, and once we, we uh, lure them in, uh, you know, attract them, it uh, gives us an opportunity to uh, find out who they are, what they are, and give them more information. Um, we send this brochure out to three to 500 uh, potential contact in our candidates in our, uh, who are in our contacts. Um, networking, though, is the uh, most uh, critical uh, issue that we do. 70% of our placements uh, come from candidates that actually uh, weren't initially interested in the job. Uh, being a public manager in Massachusetts requires a lot of scrutiny and a lot of attention. And some people just you know, won't take the risk uh, to apply for a job uh, unless um, they're uh, recruited or um, they're uh, protect their confidentially confidentiality is is protected. Um, I spent 40 years as a manager uh, in Massachusetts, as did Charlie, as did Tom, 
Uh, we have great contacts in Massachusetts. Uh, we also um, teach and graduate programs, know a lot of young uh, aspiring candidates, um, and you, which would be fortunate for you. Uh, and we find that um, the personal touch and the personal recruitment is um, how we get uh, most of our uh, great candidates. Um, we, uh, we aren't looking just at the job um, and our candidates trust us. Uh, we protect their confidentiality. Uh, they trust our honesty. Uh, and candidates have an understanding. We have a thorough uh, knowledge of the community, its needs. And we, when we call them and tell them that there might be a good fit here and that uh, this may be a good opportunity for them professionally, uh, they trust us because they know, one, we're straight shooters, and two, uh, we know enough about the community and them uh, where... Um, where you know they can trust uh, our our overture um we they also know that we view them as a customer we take the time to make the effort to thoroughly screen and prepare them for the process once they apply uh and we uh stay in con constant contact with anybody who applies um just you know for background um during my career, I had a number of assistants. I also uh, had great internship programs. There are probably a hundred people uh, throughout the country that uh, have worked for me that are either uh, assistants um, or uh, town managers, either in Massachusetts or throughout the country. And I use them as my primary screening network to to start talking about potential candidates that may be a good fit. Uh, the networking is um, the most critical exercise we do. Uh, and it's based on our relationship uh, and our experience and our connections with people that we've worked with over the years. Um, I don't know if you're going to have a screening committee. I would advise that you do. Uh, we, although we share, uh, the complete application portfolio with the screening committee in the town. Uh, we try to recommend eight to 10 candidates uh, for the screening committee to, to, um, to, to interview. We attend all their meetings, organize the committee, provide a list of questions. Once we have a list of, there's probably about 70 uh, sample questions. Once uh, the committee has, pick the questions they want to ask. We work with them to, uh, to make them Hadley focused. Uh, you can make a general suggestion on a question, uh, but you really want to cater the questions so that there's some connection to Hadley. And from the asking the question, you can discern whether the candidate has done their homework, understands what the challenges are and understands, uh, Hadley. Um, once we go through the process, we ask the screening committee to recommend three to four candidates for the select board to uh, interview. Um, we repeat the same prep process with the select board. Once uh, they accept the recommendation from the screening committee, we organize the meetings, we contact the candidates, uh, we, we provide guidance on questions to be asked. Uh, we file a, a report on the process and the candidates that are recommended. Uh, and uh, we staff the effort uh, and um, the, the board's uh, interview process. With Hadley, given its size and the intimate relationship that you're gonna have to re um, develop with your next town administrator, uh, we would recommend that the board meet individually as individuals with each of the final candidates. Generally, we do that in private. It's usually on a Saturday morning and we can organize it so that uh, before you have your formal public interview, you can have a 45 to an hour uh, meeting with each of the candidates in a less uh, pressure packed uh, process 
so that you can really get a good feel for who they are and what they are before you uh, you go um, and interview them in public. Um, we also uh, do a comprehensive uh, reference check. Um, one of my associates is a former police chief in Arlington who does all the background checks. Uh, we write a comprehensive uh, write-up of each of the finalist candidates and our review and assessment of them as finalists. Uh, we go to great lengths to contact direct reports, co-workers, uh, boards that they work for. Uh, on occasion, we will um, ask for writing. Oh, we will always write, ask for writing samples. If we can, we 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 will um, look online and uh, identified by the the candidate presentations that they've made in public, so that we can understand uh, how they do that. Um, and we also um, have we talk to the the press in the community that they work in. Uh, we talk to advocates, you know, uh, citizen advocates and um, volunteers in the community. And on occasion, we've actually visited the, the community, sat in a coffee shop uh, and talked to, to people and asked them about candidates, depending on, on who they are. Um, we don't, we ask the candidates for names. We probably interview about uh, 30 references. Uh, probably half of them are identified by the candidate. Uh, the other half are peers that we know or um, from talking to some of the references, getting names of other people to talk about the candidate and contacting them. Um, you know, I'm not going to take it up any more of your time. This is a brief overview. I think the proposal speaks for itself. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Anybody have questions for Rick? <clears throat> Um, it looks like in your proposal that you were slated that this would take about 13 weeks. Have you had situations where it takes longer or is uh, it not hard? Well, I had a long conversation with the police chief and I, I know he's eager to go back uh, to his <laughs> real job. Uh, generally, um, you know, we when we propose... Uh, we identify an 18-week process, but we also communicate to the select board we, we can craft the schedule in a way that meets whatever their needs are. After talking to the chief, I, um, I shortened the recruitment process. I only need six weeks. Um, I need the two weeks uh, for the advertisement and interview and the synthesis development uh, and the brochure development. Uh, and, you know, recruiting will take me another uh, month. Um, if we can get a screening committee that can um, adhere to a schedule, uh, the 13-week process shouldn't be um, an issue. Uh, e I'm trying to think. Carver, uh, actually, I, I submitted a 13-week schedule with Carver, and they asked me to reduce it to 10 and uh, I killed myself getting it to 10 and um, imposed upon the screening committee to, to meet um, much more frequently in a condensed fashion than they wanted to, uh, but we were able to do it. So I, I don't think keeping to the 13 week schedule will be a problem. Thank you. David, do you have a question? Yes. Uh, are you, is your firm compensated by any of the candidates in the search process? Do you work on behalf of the candidates or on behalf of the town? We view the candidates as our customer and, and we serve them, but we work for you. Um, the only uh, compensation we get is uh, the fee that you pay us uh, and that's it. Um, and I, it, I would advise you never hire a, a a firm that uh, charges the candidates uh, for a job. It's, uh, there are, there's a, a conflict there that um, makes me very uncomfortable. Okay. So when um, you give us a, an estimate for the cost of this project, 
Is that fixed or will there be changes to it because you've had to travel out to Hadley more often or we're really difficult to work with and you have to spend more time with us or whatever it may be? <laughs> I, I shouldn't admit this. I don't do this for the money. Um, I, I care about the profession. I care about helping communities find good people. Um, our proposal uh, gives you an 18 month guarantee that if for any reason, any of the candidates we recommend uh, don't last 18 months, we will come back and do the recruitment for free. We're that confident in the work, the farming work we do up front, uh, the effort we take to understand the community and the match that we uh, recommend for the candidates. Um, the the I, I'm sorry, but I, I, I missed part of the question. So if it takes you more time in terms of travel or other things, that's all built into the base rate? Uh, um, I, I was a manager uh, before this. I never let a committee meet all by itself. And uh, I wouldn't do that here. Um, whatever I give you for a price uh, will be comprehensive and there will be no extras, no nothing. Uh, we're committed to doing the job and doing it right, getting you a good candidate for however long it takes and for how many for however many resources we have to put into it. Thank you. Okay. All right, Rick, thank you so much for uh, attending our meeting tonight. And we'll be back in touch um, with you soon. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, and our final um, search uh, consulting firm for the evening is MRI, and I believe we have Alan Gould. I see Lori Gould up there. So do we have um, anyone from the consulting firm MRI with us this evening? You're on mute if you're trying to talk. Can you, can you scroll say, over, Alex, so we can see us hanging out? There, I'm, I'm doing it. Oh, okay. There's two people. Right I think. Um, yeah, I'm there. here for the, the Young Men's Club Fishing Derby request, not the consultant. It's Sean Gold. Oh, okay. I believe Buzz. Sorry, is, yep, I should have said that. Sorry, yeah. I believe Buzz is actually. Is Buzz, Buzz from MRI? I think that was the guy we had last time. Right. Yeah. 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 I'm asking him to unmute. Yep. Yeah. Going once. <laughs> yeah. You know it. Buzz, are you there? Hello. Oh, Mercy here. There we go. You got me? Yes. And I just got off the phone with Buzz. We were just waiting. We were watching you guys. And we didn't want to participate in the interviews. But uh... OK, so um, whoever's going to be presenting, we're ready to hear. OK, um, Buzz should be on in a minute, but I'll start. So first and foremost, thank you. Uh, for the invite. Uh, you probably recall, and Buzz was the lead, uh, we did your search the last time around in 2019-2020. Uh, uh, we know Hadley a little bit because of that, um, and we're very happy uh, when Mike gave Alan a call. Alan would be here. He's the president of the company, but he's on vacation, and he said, I can't zoom in from where I am. So uh, but he will be the lead uh, if we're successful in in being engaged uh, by the community of Hadley. Uh, and the the other part of the team will be myself, Bob Mercier, and Buzz Stabzinski, who, as I mentioned, did your search the last time. And I think you folks ended up with Carolyn. Um, so uh, the good news for that is you had Carolyn there. You had David there before. You've got stability. Uh, that's a good thing in this field today. Um, we, we've done a number of these and we can go into that a little bit on the question part of it. Uh, 
but it it is getting difficult. It's a difficult position to to uh, occupy in today's uh, vi- environment. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't find good people. We just found somebody who I think is going to turn out to be very good in a town of Lakeville, Mass. It's a town a little bigger than you. It's about ten thousand people. Uh, he's a he he in this case is a younger individual with a lot of passion, a lot of energy, the type of individual that we like to place in communities like yours, which need that passion, that commitment, that energy, um, because they're breaking into the field. And this individual is not totally breaking in. He's a financial guru. Uh, he's been an assistant in in good sized communities. So he's not a rookie, uh, but we think he's going to work out very, very well. So um, and I see Buzz is on. Uh, Buzz, you want to take it from here? <laughs> yeah. It, uh, thank you, Bob. Yeah, I, I had a uh, hard time getting on. I went out and got back in again. Um, uh uh, I don't know if uh, Bob mentioned to you, but uh, Alan Gould, uh, our president, is traveling, and uh, he's not able to be with us uh, um, this evening. So he just wanted to let you know that um, that he was on vacation and not able to be part of this. But uh, I want to say it's nice to be talking to you folks again. I was a lead consultant on the search uh, four years ago where uh, we found, you folks found, um, uh, Carolyn, and uh, hopefully that worked out fine. I understand she's uh, retiring for her own reasons, and um, uh, we're happy to be considered again to do a search for you folks. Uh, as uh, Bob said, uh, we've had some success these past few uh, years since we've been here. We've worked in some small towns, uh, towns your size. Uh, after I worked with you folks, I was in Barrie, did a search in Barrie. And then I don't know if Bob mentioned most recently, this past uh, spring, we wrapped up the search in Southwick. And um, so we're familiar with Western Mass. We're familiar with with your uh, region and would be pleased to uh, be considered for uh, another search. And um, the market is uh, lively. Uh, In in, uh, Southwick, uh, we had 17 candidates uh, in Barrie, believe it or not, we had 24 candidates. That was a year ago. In fact, almost a year ago to the day, I think October 2nd, I was looking through my notes, the select board there appointed uh, a woman as their uh, new town administrator. So um, uh, you know, it's a, a little more challenging now uh, than it was uh, a few years ago, but the search we did uh, four or five years ago was challenging because it was the middle of COVID. Uh, if you recall, I certainly recall. Uh, but you know, ultimately we were successful. You folks got a good uh, town administrator. Yeah, a couple of couple of things, if I might. Um, uh, you don't know. You know uh, a little bit about us, but um, just a little bit about me. Uh, I've been a town manager, town administrator, uh, predominantly in Eastern Massachusetts, in Burlington, Massachusetts, and in Berwicka, Massachusetts. Also done some small uh, temporary assignments in Boxborough, Massachusetts, and Wayland, Massachusetts. I've also been, uh, so I I empathize, I think, with the five of you sitting there. I've been an elected select board member in my town of Tingsboro, which is a town of about 13,000 people. Um, So I've I've seen both sides, uh, both from the professional manager perspective and also from the uh, chief elected official perspective. So I... I, I bring that to the table, which is a little bit different than a lot of folks who are in this business that we're in, the recruitment business. So, um, and Buzz, you didn't give them your history, although they, they've well, had it for four years ago. Right. I've been uh, retired as, uh, from the town of uh, Andover for almost 10 years now, and I've been doing recruitment with MRI, with Bob and with Alan uh, ever since. And, you know, in, in uh, Massachusetts, Connecticut, uh, and Rhode Island, and we Finished up a job, uh, two jobs actually in Connecticut, in uh, Marlboro, a very small town, Marlboro, Connecticut, uh, uh, about six, seven months ago. And then uh, about the same time, we did uh, 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 Winchester, Connecticut, Winchester, Winstead, uh, Connecticut, which is uh, south of you folks. But um, so we've we've worked uh, in small communities, and we just 
are just wrapping up Lexington. So we've worked in larger communities as well. Um, uh, but I see, Bob, are you not on um, the video? Trying to get on, but uh, probably, and it seems my camera's not working, but they can okay. hear me. Uh, All right. All right. That, um, um, that's good. Um, so, um, yeah, let, let me just comment one thing, Buzz, uh, just so uh, they know. Um, so one of the things that, uh, whether you go with us or not, one of the things we'd like you to just think about uh, as a board is don't restrict yourself to a what we call a traditional uh, town administrator, town manager, somebody who's been in the field for 15 years, that type of thing. And I don't, I'm, I'm sort of preaching to the choir here because you guys had Carolyn, which is a non-traditional candidate. Um, but don't shut the door to that. We, we have been successful in placing, uh, maybe Mike will appreciate this, we've placed uh, people in, from the police field uh, we've had very, very successful two that I know of. One who was the, believe it or not, the head of the Rhode Island State Police. He was a colonel. He's now the South Kingston, Rhode Island town manager. Similarly, in Somerset, Massachusetts, we have a very successful candidate. I knock on wood when I say this because I know that could change tomorrow. Uh, who was a deputy uh, police chief in Cranston, Rhode Island. And he is now the town administrator in Somerset, Massachusetts. And by all accounts, is they love him. So my point is, uh, there are talented people across the spectrum in municipal government. Uh, so just keep an open mind. And again, I'm preaching to the converted. You did that the last time in your search. Yeah. So uh, that's just for your information. Does anybody have any questions for uh, the folks from MRI? I'll ask the same question uh, as I asked the others. Do you receive compensation from any candidates to work on their behalf, or do you work strictly for for the team? No, we, strictly for the client. Yeah, we, for you, we, we work strictly for you. Yeah. yeah. If we have a candidate that we can't make a, a deal with, or something falls apart before they get hired, and we have to start the process all over again, will you charge us? Again, or will that be part of the original fee? That's that, we we have a guarantee. We we call it a, a year guarantee. Uh, yeah. In fact, we unfortunately had that happen last time. We had somebody at the altar, and it didn't work out. And uh, and and but it did work out with Carolyn. So yeah, that that it doesn't happen often. But it, if it does happen, we stand behind the process. We stand behind you folks. Our job is to find you a a, a good qualified town administrator. Thank you. What's the timeline on your process? Well, we typically, it, we typically say uh, uh, about four months, 12 to 16 weeks. And that, that believe me, that is, that is dependent on your desires. Uh, and just as a, for instance, if you want us to talk to 25 people in town and you want us, and you have a screening committee, I don't know if you're doing any of that. Uh, that may elongate the process a bit, depending, as you know, with the open meeting law and stuff, everybody has to, you have to post everything with those meetings. And sometimes you can't get people at the same time. So it just expands the process. But typically, 12 to 16 weeks, we can get somebody. Have you folks um, decided if you're going to have a screening committee or a search committee or is it, uh, it going to go right to the select board? I think that's going to be our next conversation. Yeah. Um, and question um, is, you're likely aware there are multiple town administrator positions that have opened up in Western Massachusetts. Um, just from a management bandwidth standpoint, you know, not sure which searches you're involved with, but do you feel that you can, you have adequate re uh, time and resources to do this? Yes. Well, I, uh, yes. Yes. The answer is yes. And I can tell you that Buzz just mentioned we just finished uh, Lexington, Massachusetts uh, last week and we're finishing Lakeville, Massachusetts. And uh, we we as a firm and it's Alan's philosophy because we serve New England uh, and Buzz and I handle the Massachusetts recruitments and the Rhode Island and Connecticut. Uh, 
recruitments. Allen and another team handle the northern part, New Hampshire, Maine, and, and Vermont. Um, we are selective. In, well, let me answer your question directly. Uh, we are not applying to any other positions at this point. Uh, any other searches at this point, nor do we have any more ongoing after we close out Lakeville. You will be uh, you will be front and center for us. And um, we, we, we do that purposely. We don't want to have three balls in the air with three different communities, some similarities <laughs> in, the, in those communities. And by the way, we're not innocent of this. We've done this in the past, but it's a little bit uncomfortable to be bouncing the same candidates between two or three different communities. We don't like to do that. So as I said earlier to the question, we are very selective in the communities we look at. We want to be able to focus our entire commitment to that community. And that would be where we would be with Hadley. Yeah. Okay. Thank right. you. Jane? Um, if we have an in-house candidate, how, how would you treat that? As you want that one? Yeah, we, we would we would treat an in-house candidate like like any other candidate. They would go through this our same process. You know, as as you know, we 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 have um, uh, essays that that we would do. They would they would be treated just like everybody else, uh, as they should be. Um, you know, you may have an in-house candidate that um, is absolutely outstanding, and uh, uh, I think it's healthy for them to go through the process where. To, to show that they're as competitive as anybody else in the marketplace. But um, certainly an in-house candidate, um, we, we often have those in communities and sometimes, you know, it, um, it's a, uh, uh, it works out for the municipality. Um, sometimes it doesn't, other times it's, uh, it's a learning experience for the in-house person to go through the process because it, uh, it's a, a, a professional development uh, kind of thing. If they don't get the position, they, they certainly understand what is involved in getting a position of this nature. Anything Thank else? You. If not, um, Buzz and Bob, thank you so much for your time tonight. Uh, I imagine we're going to have a little bit more uh, conversation then we'll be getting back in touch with uh, the firms. All right. Great. Well, Thank you we for the, uh, the privilege of speaking with you folks again, and we wish you the best of luck on filling this important position. And thank, thank you. you. Good luck. Good uh, luck. Bye-bye. Yeah. Good night. night. Um, okay, we've got three minutes before our 7 o'clock appointment, so let's see if we can uh, just quickly... Uh, Jump in real quick. Oh, yes. sorry. Yes. Same matter. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to let the board know from kind of a global perspective that I've spoken to all three of the uh, firms multiple times via email as well as on the phone. Um, the analogy that uh, Bernie referenced in the beginning with hunting versus trapping, uh, all three of the uh, firms, from what I've gathered, have, have real boots on the ground feel to them so they they really do recruit um i'm not sure you know you could really go wrong with any one of them uh, but what i would also you know obviously you want to take it under advisement think about it and make that decision but you do as you all know have one internal applicant from from our our, our uh, workforce and so just really quickly, I don't know if you want to make a decision now or not, but uh, we could put that, you know, your decision as far as uh, which company you'd like to go with, if you want to go with a company and or uh, looking at the internal candidate on a future meeting agenda, potentially Monday or next Wednesday, just with some marching orders from now. That would be my suggestion. Is that if you have the uh, the application for your internal candidate, I email all of you. You can review it, take some time with it, and then I can put it on to you and discuss at a future meeting if you'd like. Mm -hmm. um, we do have the hearing scheduled on on Monday, right? Um, so that would be the only topic that night. I mean, I, I know I'd like a chance to kind of think about these firms and then I'm also hoping if you do have um, information 
uh, the monetary. Yeah. If you can send share that with us. That to us, and then we would end that for our discussion. Would people be okay doing it Monday and not yeah. waiting? Yes, that's fine. Right. Sounds good. I mean, I think we need to keep moving forward. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Great. That brings us exactly to seven o'clock. Thank you. You're doing a good job, Mom. Right? Right? Cool. <laughs> SF, I wasn't looking at you. I'm like, oh, I forgot. Mike wants to say something. Okay. So that brings us to um, our joint meeting with the Board of Assessors. Um, I see that some of you are here. Do you want to call your meeting to order? Can't hear him at all. Yeah. Oh, they need a microphone. No, I'm right about here. Okay, thanks. So um, just for everyone at home tonight, um, from the assessors, we have Jeff Mish and Bill Bannock. Bill, is there nothing else you wanted to be doing today of all days? I'm sorry? You said nothing else you wanted to do today. I thought it might be a special day for you. <laughs> Looking forward. Oh, the birthday one. It's all better. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Billy. Happy birthday to you. Okay, well, that was different. <laughs> we should have joint meetings with you more often. <laughs> all right. It's <laughs> Okay, well, thank you for uh, coming tonight. So um, I understand the topic of, of discussion tonight is you wanted to meet with us to discuss um, Dan's uh, planned. Well, actually, you wanted to meet with us. Okay, all right, good. But we, we collectively wanted to discuss that. So did you want um, I, to start? I just briefly, Dan really outlined it well. You got the hand out. Oh, no, I didn't hand that out. All right. Okay. So, so, okay. Dan, you can jump in or Mike, yeah. you can jump in. So we... We had a, uh, a meeting and we went over to all types of scenarios and all types of good things or bad things and easy things and hard things. And uh, one of the things we came to an agreement was on the hiring option. And we, Dan laid it up to the table, but we're hoping, and Dan seems to believe that we will find a fully qualified, excellent applicant in a school from the area from his association. Oh, I'm hopeful. Right. Very hard. Yeah. Okay. All right. If if that's not the case, option two, um, we find someone that has some experience, not so much that needs probably more training. Um, and that would be something that have to be taken about Dan and setting back in more to do some of that training, perhaps Dan that possibly, yeah. Uh, that's all. And and Dan actually put on here and He's got on here partially qualified, but as we threw it around and things, uh, partially or even qualified, not so many as a realtor or an appraiser, but someone maybe with a common degree or, you know, from a school that could, doesn't have that actual experience, but would be a quick learner and give that up quick enough. So it's not like we're limiting ourselves to people in the field entirely. And then the third thing, if that happens, and we're gonna assume it's not, then we probably have to go into a pool of retirees and then deals with some folks out there that could maybe bridge us until we come up with better ideas. Maybe the reason we even get someone involved by is hours or salary or just time is off. So we could get someone and then feels there's some folks out there that are retired that can step in and keep a bridge going until we can get somebody. Um, and you guys can jump in anytime you want. I just wanted to get that out there. Yeah, we met with Mike last Wednesday for probably about a half an hour <laughs> and went over this. And I'm I'm optimistic, and I think he's optimistic, and the board's optimistic that we'll be able to find somebody uh, within the next eight to 10 weeks, probably by mid-December. Mm -hmm. It all depends on, Mike had approached the subject of having an overlap where they start before I leave. Mm -hmm. So there's that training window there. 
and they can get familiarity with the office, depending on how long that window gets budgeted for. Uh, we're hoping to get somebody by early to mid-December, maybe by Christmas at the latest. And your, is it January 17th? 17th. 17th is yeah, your, so your there's, departure. Yeah. <clears throat> I gave Mike a, a request for six weeks of overlap, but I think that might be a little much because I'm not going to be here Christmas week. And with our clerical staff only working 20 hours a week, I'd feel uncomfortable having somebody come in and be there working by themselves with the public and tax mm -hmm. bills just getting mailed out. Okay. They don't need that kind of introduction to have. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot, a lot of it will be depending on who we get, right? You know, what level of experience do they have? I think the overlap is absolutely necessary, but you know, like Dan said, uh, and also the likelihood of, of getting this person hired before special town meetings where we're going to need to uh, add more funding to that line, how the overlap mm -hmm. is nil. So uh, we need the you know budgeting over and above what we think we need is probably the best best plan of action just in case we get somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience that he's hoping for, and then we'll train them up and hopefully they'll be ready. Uh, mm -hmm. Before he's he's done, but that was kind of the plan of action. So really, what it comes down to is, is uh, we wanted to have this discussion to see what Dan and the assessors think the town of Hadley needs moving forward. Make sure we're in agreement, and then get my marching order to make mm -hmm. it happen. Yeah, Dan put together quite a quite an extensive. Uh, Job responsibility. Well, that's the the job descriptions yep. that uh, we adopted the formally the job descriptions that Collins Center did. Okay. At our last meeting. Mm -hmm. So, so as far as advertising, how will that work? So, well, we can handle the advertising part of it from the um, minister's office based upon. Direction to the select board in agreement mm -hmm. with the assessors as to what we're advertising for. Are we advertising first for a full time individual from the pool uh, where Dan thinks? I mean, if we're going to advertise in the you know, MMA or, or his professional association, uh, he can help with that. But how do we how do we make that happen? If we're talking about you know LinkedIn or something like that. That's something that Jennifer and I can take care of. Um, if you're if we don't get any bites, you know, then we move down to like you said, option number two, you know, or even option number three, where we're looking at contracting individuals uh, working on an hourly basis. So at the end of the when we were going through that discussions, I would like to get an advertisement from the Gazette just because I don't want someone in this area to miss it because if we go through the associations, etc., maybe somebody sitting right here in Hadley like, that won't know. Yeah, so, yeah there, there could be a former assessor that's out there that's not actually working as an assessor right now. It could be an appraiser or a real estate agent, mm -hmm. yeah, or so we in some other capacity. They may say, "Gee, maybe I might want to take this time to get back into right. that field." And, and it sounds like, I mean, just from from listening to, to the way that you portrayed this, it sounds like there's some degree of, of flexibility. I mean, you, you you gave a wide range of options in terms of what could work for Hadley. So if I'm, I'm hearing you correctly, the first step is to just let it be known that we need an assessor and then start evaluating from there. Right. So yeah. hopefully we get a number of applications and it's easy from there. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe uh, get the Gazette advertisement out there and Dan's association that he's a member of ASAP and mm -hmm. see what we get. And then we could decide on A, B, or C for the plan. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit backwards, right? We're backing into a solution here, but essentially, ultimately, dependent upon what we find, could save the town's money in the long run. Right. That's not what we're going to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need... Um, Anything from me to advertise in your association or 
you take care of the gazette part, you take care of uh, if you can handle the gazette part, okay. I can handle the my so state association and okay. I'll send an email blast out to our local association Perfect. and also Franklin County okay. Association. It'd be good to have the same dates and everything so they should coordinate between they do it and make sure they're advertising. Yeah, I mean, we can't, we can't post the between the job description and the set. I'm looking for the like paragraph posting. Yeah. yeah, just that it's available to go to the town website. I'm sure Emily can post it easily yeah. enough on the town website. So I know the Gazette lags a little bit when they're advertising now compared to what it used to be. How mm -hmm. how soon do you, you know, if you submit something to the association, is it out there within a week or is it a monthly publication kind of thing or how does that work? It would, it, it's basically online, Okay. the state association, the local county, Hampton, Hampshire County Association. It would more be, more be like just us sending an email to the individual members or the, the other offices in Hampton and Hampshire County saying this position is open. If they want to, if you know of anybody that might be interested in it or someone in your office that might be interested in it, the full job description is on the website. So would a uh, like third week of October or last week of October be enough time, you think, to get a response from the Gazette and the association people or just to kind of move things forward for first week? Uh, yeah, I would think we could do a either October 31 or November 1 deadline, filing deadline. And then that would give us, I think, more than enough time for November. Right. How long would we send something to them? How long would it be in? If we sent them something tomorrow, they would go in and Saturday, Monday's paper. It's it's quite substantial delay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Dan, can I come see you tomorrow? We'll work yeah. out the uh, we'll work out what most we should say. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of the, the actual hiring process, would yeah, would, I mean obviously the assessors, um, would there be you know, the town administrator participate in that as well or Oh, oh, certainly we need Dan there for his expertise, sure. And I would assume us and then at least a board member, a more older. I mean, I'm pretty sure that uh, this is about uh, 35 years since this has been. Well, I was just going to say, what did we do last time? Yeah, uh, <laughs> that, that won't work. I was brought in for the interview, and there was the entire finance committee, entire select board. Entire assessors board, wow, uh, well, town administrator, to accountant, treasurer. There was like 18 people all filing questions. So, so, so I, so I really don't want a bunch of people who want. I would say probably three. I don't think outside our board, board. I would think probably the chair, me, the HR director. Well, when we hire an HR director mm -hmm. and maybe the town administrator. Yep. Yep. And and then the special one person from the select board. And no? yeah, that yeah, I think that would be yeah, that sounds like okay. Good. Molly would love to do that. Molly in the previous free time. <laughs> yeah, all my free time. All our meetings start with song. Yeah, that's right. I just <laughs> found that out. <laughs> um I, I I will do it, but I'd be more than happy to have somebody else if they would like to. Okay. It's a lot of hands up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It looks like you're stuck with me. Okay. All right. No, that sounds good. I think we can move it along and um, appreciate the, you know, like I said, 35 years. Wow. It's going to be going to be quite the transition for everybody. So. Yeah. And the, the clerk is, well, our clerk is leaving as well. She's got 36 years. Janice. No, I'm sorry. 38. Yeah. Oh, she's been longer than 38 here. Well, we're both the same. But I have four years in East Hampton. Okay. So we're All both right. 38 years. Right. Okay. Anything else for the assessors? Um, Dan, you were going to stay and just uh, give yeah, a departmental update. Like you want to do that while they're still quickly. convened? Yeah. Okay, sure. Uh, just quickly, one of the things we did back in June, uh, 2024 Equalized Values came out, and we noticed that the our new growth was underestimated by the state. So we appealed that and got that amount increased from 11 million up to it's a tad over 23 million for the year. 
which quite a, under, I was gonna say that uh, sounds a like big a underestimate. Yeah, they when I talk to Chip Peck at, at DOR, they don't take into account if there's any major projects coming in to town, which we had the self storage facility and the hotel going up. Mm -hmm. And those wouldn't, they just take a, a rolling five year average of what we've had. Uh -huh. So we got that bumped up. That'll result in an increased state aid Great. over the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, back in June, we also released 70,000 of overlay sur to of overlay to overlay surplus, which will help boost free cash for all town meeting. Uh, we processed the, in the real estate abatements, which we didn't get too many. Mm -hmm. There's two that went that are going to the ATB, but I have a feeling those won't be heard before next spring. And Dan, I'm sorry, just for <clears throat> so when you say release the overlay, so you have budgeted a hundred something thousand or whatever, or uh, overlay is, was changed with the Municipal Modernization Act. Okay. Instead of having a, a set amount each year, which we used to put in seventy each and every year, mm -hmm. it got lumped into one overlay amount one account so we would just add a little some each year we we budgeted 70 but when it came time to do the recap sheet we would traditionally knock it down to probably 40 45 mm -hmm. uh exemptions and senior tax work off are probably eating about 30,000 of that okay so we've been slowly adding 10,000 10,000 10,000 10,000 and this year i think we were up to about 220 or 230. So we really 70 of that. And that's still, we felt that still gives us a good cushion. If we get a large commercial case where we're not going to say, Ooh, we need to all of a sudden come up with another. And grand. that's what I was wondering. Yeah. I thought yeah. it was always the concern was if there was a large, large request that came in. So. Yeah. There's enough there to cover a sizable abatement if we need it. Okay or a large increase in abatements or senior tax work off or exemptions. Okay. So sorry to interrupt. I just want oh, to clarify no, that. Oh, no problem. Uh, we processed the five motor vehicle excise commitments that have come in so far. We're up a good amount of money this year, probably about, a, I think we took in about a million dollars in motor vehicle excise, mm -hmm. which is a lot more than I think the year before we were at 840. Now we're slightly over a million. Uh, we processed all our map changes did supplemental real estate building, and we mailed out exemption applications to anybody who receives one last year so that they could process them timely and get them filed. Uh, what we're currently doing, we're finalizing our building permits, should be done probably by the end of the week with all the permit work. Uh, we're looking at growth. It's probably going to be a little bit higher. I think we estimated 275. We're going to be around 290 for our actual growth. Uh, as we discussed earlier we've got two people retiring in the office and we've been working on that the chapter land applications are going out probably the beginning of next week they were due october 1 was the old due date or old deadline to file they are now due december 1st the legislature changed the filing deadline last year from october 1 to december 1 because there's too many farmers still out harvesting right now so they're not actually getting the the forms filled out timely. So they changed it to December 1st, gave them an extra two months to work on it. Uh, we're working on our assessments for fiscal 25. It looks like we're probably gonna go up about 3% on the single family homes this year, which is not a whole lot, but there's a few other communities nearby that are going up about three or 4%. So it's it's not a, an astronomical amount. I mean, in the past, we've, we've seen 10, 15% a year increases. Mm -hmm. So it's not really gonna be that much and it shouldn't result in a huge difference in a person's tax bill. How about commercial? Uh, commercial is probably gonna stay about the same. We only had seven, six sales that actually qualified that were qualified arms length sales for 22 and 23. So we're looking at, we're going to be about 92% of, of sale price for those six. So we're, we should be okay with that. And residential, we're down to just over 90 
using the preliminary ratios. So we're looking at probably bumping it up to 94, yeah. which would be this is where the 3% comes from. Um, we're in the process of doing the boat excise. We'll have that squared away by the end of the calendar year. Not that it's a large amount. It's only about $3,500 a year, but 3,500 is 3,500 in taxes. And uh, we're looking at for the classification hearing, mm -hmm. which is coming up, potentially holding that on November 20th. As soon as we can get it in, yeah. Yeah, if, if we can't do it the 20th, we can do it the, the week after Thanksgiving. Typically, we would normally have a hearing like the first meeting in December. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving day is like drop that right. Uh, for town meeting, we don't want to go beyond the 14th or yeah, the 14th is probably the latest, but the hearing would be done after mm -hmm. everything else is done. So we could actually do the first meeting in December. I think that's the second, third. Second, third. And then that, that wouldn't be a problem. We'd have it back in plenty of time. Okay. And we're starting to work on a recap. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming in um, on both fronts. And we're trying to do this bring in um, departments so that they have an opportunity to bring the board up to speed on what they're working on. So you now it's busy time for your office this time of year. So thank you. Uh, do you need to close your meeting? Vote to close your meeting? Yeah. Make a motion to close. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you for coming and enjoy the rest of your night, Bill. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Big party time. <can. laughs> yeah, what else you got planned for him, Jeff? <laughs> okay, so uh, rolling on to our regular agenda. So the consent agenda, we have the minutes from September 4th, 18th, and 23rd of 2024. We have a contract addendum for Michael Mason, the interim town administrator. Uh, motion to approve consent agenda. Second. We'll let it go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then public comment. Do we have anyone here this evening for public comment? No? Okay. Um, we'll skip over that. I know we have a couple of people that are here for a couple of very relatively brief items. So I am going to jump down to uh, 6.10, uh, which is the Young Men's Club Fishing Derby. Uh, October 6th. Um, this was the reason for our agenda being amended within a 48 hour period. So is there someone here from the club? Yes, me, Sean Gould. How are you guys doing tonight? Good, Sean. We we're looking for approval and permission to have the kids fishing derby at the reservoir Sunday, um, October 6th from 8 a.m. to 11. Okay. Is there anything different about uh, this year's derby than years past? Uh, it's going to be an hour shorter, and that's about it. We're going to have a porta potty on site. Uh, it'll be removed by noontime, and uh, as long as we can get a key to open the gate, uh, we're going to cook hot dogs for the kids and have prizes. That's it. Okay. And Jennifer, you have any concerns about the derby this year? I, I didn't know about the hot dogs and the cooking um, down there. I didn't know about that. Is that's I don't. I don't think I've ever been told that that happens down there before this. Um, I would ask that we just check in with the fire chief before we have a fire at the reservoir. We, uh, we, have, we, have, yeah, we, we bring in just uh, one of those little burners there. Uh, we keep it away from the kids and it's uh, very contained. Just boil a, we boil it up. We just serve hot dogs, free hot dogs for the kids. Okay. So, Sean, could we just ask um, that you touch base with um, inspections and, and fire? Absolutely. I'll talk to Chief Spagnable. Okay. That'd be great. So, does somebody want to make a motion subject to whatever conditions might be um, <clears throat> so moved and post? Second. Okay. Motion made by David, seconded by Randy. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Yeah. Thanks for, for our attention, Sean. So glad we could get it done for you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. No. Have a good night. 
You too. Um, okay. And uh, if we could, let's see. Uh, can we do the uh, town treasurer and building department, old business 5.2? Tommy, 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 Lady in the middle is the, uh, the one that's caused on projects. <laughs> uh, so he uh, is going to be moving from um, Tommy's office to Linda's office. The reason that this causes just a little bit of a kerfuffle is just because uh, the position, in both positions are union positions. And so we had to, we are still in negotiations with the municipal union. And um, so we had to make sure that the attorneys involved, the town, the town council, as well as the uh, union attorney, were aware of this switch and, and the adjustment. Because originally, um, the position in Linda's office is only a part-time position, and uh, the position in Tommy's office is full-time. So the original thought, uh, when Carolyn was the uh, town administrator, was that it would be moved he would simply move to the treasurer's office and the treasurer position would become full-time while Tommy's uh, office position would become part-time. I don't know how much um, involvement uh, the building department had in that discussion, so I, I wasn't aware of it. I, I do know that as we stand right now, I think a lot of, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think a lot of the reasoning behind that was because the hope was that we would find another DD and <laughs> she'd be able to handle the job in, in the building uh, office on a part-time capacity. I think as we stand right now, we're fairly confident that we won't be able to find someone like that. And so uh, essentially, I think where we're at right now is that both departments are requesting uh, full-time positions so would be adding a half of a part-time position to uh, the building permanent coordinator position. Uh, and so in order to post for that whole job, I figured we should come before you, have some discussion, see if we feel that it's necessary prudent, and something that you want to do so that you can, again, post properly for the job. Can I just, just as a little bit of of background, um, Linda, I think your original, and, and if I'm not right, tell me, but I think the original request you had was for somebody full time, yes. and it got backed into you should take whatever you could get, <laughs> right? But maybe that, an right. act of desperation, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, but it was. So it's 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 not like this has always been a part time position and now we're asking for it to be full time. It's just we're going back to your original, original ask, right? From right, this this does go back a ways, and we just haven't been. It um, started out with Joan and I sharing a position uh, that would help. Uh, we called that a. Uh, finance assistant. Mm -hmm. She did payroll and Jones with Joan and then she'd come over the rest of the time and do data entry with me. That was never anyone actually I've never had an assistant treasurer since Joan since we did since we broke up. She went to HR and I know uh, <laughs> others have assisted both of us but I'm, um, there is a leap from being an assistant and a data entry person to being an assistant treasurer. And that is someone who can talk to the banks, move some money, be authorized to move the money, have the authority over the banks, deal with people on the phone. Um, I basically never had anyone either even handle the phone. It's been straight data entry. So it is a comp it is an additional um, skill set to uh, 
to, to bring what Dee Dee provides to it. And um, I knew right off the bat when she was interested in it that it was going to work because I've seen her in operations. She's been, I, we, I basically started about the same time nine years ago. <laughs> and she's always been very good from the, in the uh, she started as halftime between uh, building a specter when it was Tim uh, Nyhart. And then uh, her other halftime was with Gail Weiss, an assistant accountant. So she's not new to accounting in Hadley. She is one of the very few people in town. I'd say it's Joan, me, and Dee Dee who have been working with Vedar for 10 years. <laughs> um, and with Joan leaving, um, it's, it comes down to, if you want to report, you're going to have to uh, wait for the accountant and contact the accountant. And Dee Dee's able to get reports, I am, Joan is. And so it's an additional service to the town. These are a lot of skills that she brings. She knows Quicken already. Um, well, she didn't know Quicken. She knew Quick Books, which is harder, and, and well before she started with uh, in Hadley. Um, so yes, we've needed. Uh, we have sort of been inching, as um, Michael says, is the Hadley way. We have been inching towards trying to fill the need in both of these departments. And HR kind of got ahead of uh, a bit last year when you when that position uh, went full time which left me with half and I'm kind of next. And unfortunately last year it went backwards instead of forwards. So, so um, Dee Dee's been really uh, already in the short time um, able to start with the, with the catch up. I think it's really important this time that it, we go ahead and make it full time. She is already authorized with the banks. You appointed her as assistant treasurer, not as an assistant last time. And she's, she's just doing a terrific job. And I think it's an asset to Hadley. And I think it's really important that we, um, continue. She, in, in her first month, we took um, the classes over at the school. We went over to the uh, treasurer's school and she's taken year one. It takes three years of courses to even be able to um, apply to be certified. So you have to be in the seat and having taken all the courses and she's already a third of the way there in just a couple of months and, and looking at other programs that she can go to in the meantime. So I think the, the enthusiasm, the, back, the background that she brings Knowing Hadley for nine years and most of the people that she's dealing with, um, it's a very smooth transition. Much smoother in my office than it will be in Tommy's, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, I know the plan has always been to have a full-time mm -hmm. assistant treasurer, so I don't have any question with that. The only question I have is bumping the part-time building uh Permitting coordinator, is that what you, what, what was your I was full-time. I am full-time. Oh, you are. You I am full-time, yeah. It's 37 and a half hours. So we were originally planning on finding a part-time <laughs> replacement for your position, and now, right? N not exactly. Okay. Um, it was that he was to still have some full uh, someone full-time. The thing okay. the thing is, is that um, with me being in the building department 37 and a half hours, because I've been doing it so long, and what, knowing what I know, I've been able to do things a lot quicker than the average. That's why I figured, you know, Linda could use the help. And then that's when I started saying, well, maybe I could start helping Linda. Um, but unfortunately, in the building department, I'm not moving, even though with the knowledge I have, I'm not moving up the pay, pay scale, you know, a scale, anything like that. Right. Um, and I need to move up in some way. And because I've had the background before with accounting and I had my own businesses and, you know, did all that stuff. So uh, for me, it was an easy transition. Plus I had worked with Linda before COVID um, in the treasurer's department, but unfortunately Tommy is going to have, um, I am going to help train the person that does get hired, but unfortunately you might not have the background with building or anything like that. And so it is, you know, something that, I'm not sure how many hours, but it would be more of part, I mean, full time than part time. Well, I think one of the confusions was originally she was going to be half time in each office. Okay. <clears throat> that 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 really yes. And that's what yeah. Carolyn wanted to start off with because she wanted to see if I really wanted to transition into it was a test. Okay. The, the, so to that. that, that, that's what I thought the case mm -hmm. was. So you working half time in the building department are you seeing a huge uh uh problem <laughs> with your your efficiencies going down and things like that a little bit we'll, we'll well, you, can, you can make her feel good Tommy. you know <laughs> yes <laughs> but we make it work 
Okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, from so, a practical uh, standpoint, I, oh, sorry. I was going to say, so having the additional, because the additional person in the office doesn't do what you do in the, right? Oh, oh the, uh, his so, assistant? Yeah. That, yeah, that, no, it, it's no. total if, if different duties. Somebody, that'd be great, but I, I think it's going to be a struggle. You know, okay. I agree that with that, so with, you know, and of course, offering the full time, I never knew it was going to be far, but often both mm -hmm. are going to get somebody with that much more knowledge. And no, I'm just the the reason I'm asking is because someone's going to say, "Well, it used to be two people in the office, and now there's three. So no, why yeah, no, full time? The, like that's I'm just double right. advocating. No, the other eliciting. person that's in the office is his uh, local inspector, part time okay. local inspector. Mm -hmm. So, but he does still not do. He doesn't but, do the, no. the front end. No, so he does that, more inspections and helping Tommy out with that and the annual inspections and things like that. Okay. That's what he's more mm -hmm. uh, doing. Yeah, I'm just going to say from a, from a practical standpoint, I don't think we want to be paying Tommy and Vern to do reception um, work. Yeah, paperwork and permitting and things like that. So, I mean, it certainly makes sense, you know, that we bring somebody in. But I also think as part of the budget process we want to look at all of the um support positions but you know we've done this multiple times in the past to see um you know how many hours are in different yeah. different departments um we'll be able to take a new look uh, based on the conversation with the assessors tonight um you know with janice leaving as well retiring as well i just know finance is gonna definitely want to I'm just <laughs> yeah that's the thing i'm gonna be watching okay yeah, um, they're gonna want to talk about it yeah so what we're hearing what i'm hearing is that dd's going full-time not half and half mm -hmm. that's the goal okay. that is that's, that's the goal, goal, or that's what's actually happened. That's what's happened. Well, you're you're going to stay doing. I'm what staying. Doing. I'm doing. Happened. I'm playing both. Okay. <laughs> I, right I, now, I'm not funded full full time. This okay. is the, the plan was that if the change would be at special town meeting, company. if we get the funding for the additional amount, that DD would then fill that fill that job. Okay. So. Um, so really, all we're talking about is the extra half, half time in your office because for Didi's, funding right yes yeah and finding somebody to replace Didi. i know that's an impossibility <laughs> but to take her place in the chair she occupies there right so, and I, I think that given the funding that i had for assistance um i don't even think it's a i think i might have been funded for 22 or 23 hours so it's not even a double. Mm -hmm. It's it's maybe yep. a three quarters of a half time position, if that makes a difference. Well, it's just easy to get caught up in. Oh no, we're looking at two positions here, but we're really not. We're looking we're, to me, we're looking at one half more more time for her in the in your office, and yes. whoever we get to replace her, that's already right. a job that's in existence. Right. And um, and then we've been very uh, very cooperative about. The, the back and forth. I know a new person, there's a lot to learn and Didi would be there for, you know, for, for backup and for going down and assisting. She's, you know, working in my office and someone comes up and needs a permit. She goes, takes care of that. So we, we have a very cooperative arrangement between the offices. So we want to make sure that's good. And I, I think this, this helps. I think we've, we've had an issue uh, generally with uh, bench death in town hall. Um, mm -hmm. There's there's one fix right there. That someone moving around, moving from one department to another, is really kind of is, is helpful in that way, as opposed to getting someone brand new from the outside. So the goal goal tonight then would be to, at what we're looking to do is adjust the warrant to make sure that the funding is in there to cover the uh, the, the half a person. Yeah. Right. Well, plus, he's all set. In fact, yeah. you might be a little over budgeted. For the replacement, right? Well, right. so and, and you no, are, I mean, so you're in this a better position, so at least that part's taken care of because you are over the 20th from about, right? What you have now, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, well, well, we'll look at it, we'll we'll talk yeah. to whoever needs the budget. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, I think they're best <laughs> better, looking yeah. for it, and we also want to make sure finance committee is aware of it too, so that they have an opportunity to chime in. Yeah, just for everybody that's watching, we just want to be clear we're trying to come up with the money to basically fund a half a position. Right. And not two new positions. Right. Because exactly. Yeah. 
So I yep. have a position which is already benefited, so you don't even have to worry about that. That's right. Oh, right. Just the hours. Okay. So, uh, and I think with Linda, uh, Linda's connection with uh, the science committee, the fact that she's been working directly on more, uh, and the fact that she's working to be an analyst and figure out the free cash situation, she can certainly insert what's left of that less than half of a position, discuss it with the finance committee, and I'm sure she can get it in. So, so I make a motion we do that. Okay. Motion Second. made by Jane. Second by David. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And the union's all good with this. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go work okay. on the clone. Um, I, I'm trying. <laughs> and while you're still here, um, I thought we could do 6.4. And then we'll go to 6.2 in the hallway there. Um, but uh, Mike, I believe you wanted to talk to us about a new human resource director and Lauren is here. <laughs> Thank you, yes. Okay, so seated before you is Lauren Wilcox. Uh, she was part of a very large uh, applicant pool that we had for human resource director. We had a uh, four person panel. Carolyn was on it before she left. Uh, the chair, myself, and John. We um, went through all of the applications. We really spent a lot of time looking through, uh, making sure that the, the qualifications that we were looking for were there. We narrowed it down to three or four interviews. Um, and Lauren, I don't want to speak for you, Molly, but Lauren, not only did her, was her resume kind of blow us away with uh, things that she has accomplished and things that she is doing right now, but her interview is phenomenal. Uh, I have uh, spoken to her references and uh, done a background check, and she is. Seems a whistle and uh, her references. I've done I've done several reference calls in my time over at the, the police department. I'm not sure that I've heard references sing the praises of someone uh, as uh, you know to the rooftops as I as I heard uh, when I uh, was speaking with her. So uh, I don't know if the board wants to ask a question before I you know. Recommendation to you or not, but um, all that really would be left is just, uh, my, my recommendation would be that uh, the board appoint uh, Lauren as the human resources director contingent on just working out um, some minor benefits and salary uh, items. I don't think we are very far apart at all based on the post and And maybe before the board asks any questions, um, just give Lauren if you want to take an opportunity to introduce yourself and thumbnail sketch of your background for everybody. I mean, they have the resume, but. Um, I'm Laura Wilcox. Um, I have primarily done human resources in school district, so I work closely with the towns, although I'm sure it will be a learning curve um, coming to the town badly. My family is from like the Chesterfield Ocean area, um, and I'm planning on moving closer to the area probably after winter time. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in business administration with a concentration in human resources. I am a notary public and a share of CP. Um, a lot of what I've done in human resources is really rebuilding departments, um, especially with technology implementations, um, making things more efficient, um, that kind of thing and kind of unionized environment. So um, it sounds like a perfect fit. Okay. No questions. No questions. Yes. What does SHRIM CP? It's a Society of Human Resource Management certified professional. Thank you. <laughs> it was actually one of the one of the main patients that was suggested for a position like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve the hiring. Second. 
Okay, motion made by David, seconded by Amy. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Welcome. Congratulations. When can you start? Um, October 21st, I think we started. That's about it. Amy, you guys have someone? So, uh, what my plan was is I'll reach out to you tomorrow or Friday. So at some point, this week, just to maybe have you come out and sit down with me and talk about some details and you can lock that in. I'll show you around the town hall and introduce you to everybody. Sounds perfect. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Hey, uh, 6.2 over 55 housing. I believe we have a couple of people and then we will do, um, and then the paint after that. Hello. Hello again. Good evening, Mr. Reedy Hello. and Mr. Roberts. Can I have another microphone? Please? The two of them should be okay. It's really when you throw in that third party. Mm. But if y'all feel like, do they need to? Okay. Thanks. <laughs> uh, Board of Tires? Board of Tires. Okay. Uh, for the record, Tom Reedy, I'm an attorney with Bacon Wilson over in Amherst. Okay. Um, with me, certainly need an introduction of Barry Roberts. Uh, we are here to talk to you this evening about a zoning amendment uh, for the fall town meeting to extend the over 55 of senior Hill, the overlay district uh, to be boarded by 116 and i've got a plan and I'll, I'll pass out to be boarded by 116 on the east uh, rocky hill on the north or maple street on the left and russell street on the south we'll give this to you just the orient you may already know Right. But anyway, I'd like to do a map of the existing senior housing market. If you want, and then that's true. So get out. Thank you. It's a little bit background on senior housing over the district. I know Mr. Dwyer, so you can direct any inaccuracies. Uh, but I believe that it was first enacted in 2008. Uh, and really what it does, it's an overlay district which allows the development of housing which is restricted to those folks who, at least one member of the household is over the age of 55 and protected class and you can um, restrict it to, to make sure at least one person is over the age of 55. And so since 2008, the uh, zoning by that they have is only to utilize my knowledge once, and it's for East Street Town, which is the development over on East Street. There's 35 units. I believe that there are two units left. Um, that's been a uh, project, not for but not for sale, correct? They're already all spoken to. And so there's there's a demand in town for um, housing, generally, I think, as you know, and certainly senior housing. And uh, we think this is a very good opportunity to expand that housing base, to expand the, the ability to have senior housing um, in town. And so there's going to be a warrant article. I, we were in front of the planning board last evening. They voted to, to take no position on it. Um, which I think we we heard that at least one of the members, if not a few of them, are going to speak in town meeting in favor of it, but they did not want to. They're not proposing it, uh, so I don't think they want to respond directly. But I don't think they want to take a position on it. And so, um, if we are successful at town meeting, what would happen is we would still have to go through a special permit process. And so what you see in front of you is the uh, the aerial map is the expanded senior housing overlay district. So that's where the, the colorized ones. So that's where you've got Rocky Hill, Russell, North Maple, and uh, 116. Particularly what, what we're interested in is the so-called bad property on the northerly end. It's about a 30 acre Parcel, uh, there's been talk of development of it for quite some time. I think Amherst DPW had some interest in Trinitas, who's a multi family housing developer, one of the 200 and some odd units on it, um, neither of which have gone anywhere 
It's not under any chapter classification, so it's not chapter 61, 61B, 61A. There's no APR, so it is developable, and somewhat apparently the landowners are looking to the development. Um, that site can bear likely 22 building lots, um, single family homes, uh, based upon a subdivision of the property. And that subdivision is something that is essentially allowed by right. We can go through the process with the planning board and likely or anyone would go through that process with the planning board. And there would be, and I'm gonna just distinguish this from the over 55 in a moment. Um, there's probably, there probably would be a request in that subdivision to have the town accept the infrastructure. So to accept the roadways, to accept the stormwater uh, systems, and the uh, other utilities that are on the site. Why I contrast that with the Nova 55 is um, what I think Barry would be looking to do with successful at town meeting and then ultimately successful with the planning board is to uh, build up to 50. So the senior housing overlay allows no more than 55 zero units in a senior housing development. They, they have to be either single family, two family, three or four units per um, in a building, I think what Barry would be looking to do is only single family. So you've got 50 single family units. It can have no more than two bedrooms each. So you have a maximum of 100 bedrooms there. Uh, in the infrastructure, so the roadways, the stormwater, there would need to be a sewer pumping station. Barry's already had a conversation with DPW. They do have the capacity at North Maple Street to have the sewer tie into it for these many units. Um, but it would require a sewer pump up part of the site to get it up and then gravity feed it into the North Maple Street um, sewer. That would all remain private, as would the uh, water lines, et cetera, that are within that development. So it's, um, you know, when we run the numbers based upon without thinking of building terms, without thinking about uh, sewer connections, water connections, et cetera just for taxes if you assess these at four hundred thousand, which when you look at these street commons they're about assessed at that amount you're looking at about two hundred and thirty thousand dollars a year in new taxes to the town in addition as part of this you would get 15 percent uh, affordable so they would qualify in the subsidized housing inventory in town and they would be provided on the site so where east street commons we did a payment in lieu here, if you're successful, they would be 15% would be provided on the site. Uh, as you likely know, there is an ability to have up to 70% local preference. So you can get um, having residents ideally downsizing and whether they go the affordable route or just market rate route. I mean, that's kind of the point of it. I think Barry can talk about it in a minute, but he can talk about the demand that he's experienced with these street commons. Um, and how he is envisioning this project. I'll pause there. I don't know if you have any, that's a lot of information that I just heard you. We're ultimately looking for, you know, a, a, a recommendation, um, hopefully to take a position on this and be able to recommend it to meeting, uh, but we're happy to answer. Before we hit that, yeah. I just need to make everybody aware, Mr. Roberts is a client of mine, so I will not be participating in this conversation. Fair enough. Uh, so the infrastructure, the grounds, I'm assuming, is going to be association maintained of some sort. Yeah, it would be a condo association. Right. So then the condo association would bear that maintenance obligation. Okay. And the town would take on the roads? Nope. You that would also, yes, okay. all of it is private. So it's, it's that's like East Street Commons, the stormwater system, the roads, the sidewalks if they're there, sprinkler system, you name it, that's all. Oh, that, that was my question, and I think it's a good way to have new growth in town with limited impact on our infrastructure, schools, et cetera. So. And just to um, one other point, I don't remember if you said it or not, so I apologize. When you were talking, um, you know, again, uh, questions come up about, you know, but wouldn't we rather... Um, and just making clear, this is not in APR Correct. at the right. and the owner has no intention of going that route. Correct. It's fully developable, and that's why, by contrast, we identified 22 building lots, which I mean, you could have four bedrooms, five bedrooms per, and then you know here where you're limited to no more than 100 bedrooms there, you could have 110. 
and then moving you know, the uh, McMansions, because I think you're at it's 200 feet of frontage and 40,000 square foot lots, so you can fit a decent sized house on there compared to I think what Barry would be looking for. So my only question, um, is it no longer under NHESP? There is from some question. So there's some priority habitat, I think, in the southwest corner. And so that'd be something we'd have to do. We haven't okay. cut into all of the diligence because it's you know, if if it does pass the town meeting, then the real work starts to get okay. to do all the diligence, the cut from the animal over the vision pictures and wildlife, et cetera. But we're you know, okay. Yeah, because I was gonna say, because my first question was is there was it wetlands down because I know it kind of Bob, goes down in yeah. and it's not, but I I was just like, I need to look up maps really quick because I was like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, if you're, if you're thinking about it, you know, on the uh, easterly side of the site, there is, it's all wooded. And I think one of the things that Barry would like to do is not go into any of those woods, including mm -hmm. the woods that jut out. And then behind the Hawkins Meadow Road, Hawkins Meadow Road um, there's a like a farm field back there. He wouldn't be going back there either. So I think he's he's trying to find that balance of respecting the natural environment with developing where mm -hmm. it's appropriate. And so those wetlands are more toward mostly ones to see in the general direction. Yeah, because I was gonna say I know across the street there's like a what do they call it? Like vernal pools. Yeah, <laughs> vernal pools. Yes, yes. But yeah. that's on the other side of the road. Yeah, and we've had uh, some it's liberty, it's um, mm -hmm. it's auto it's it's uh, mm -hmm. does a lot of Barry's work, and so we'll have him out there to look at it. He's a, he's a wildlife biologist, and so you know, there's obviously many rules that come with if there is a vernal pool or some endangered or uh, protected mm -hmm. species, they can consider it a take, they can apply an offset of mm -hmm. three to one or two to one, depending upon what the actual is out there. So, yes, that's. Yeah. So one of the questions I know that's going to come up is, do you plan to have the entrance of the neighborhood on Rocky Hill Road or where where's where the road going to be? Yeah, great question. So I think it, at this point, it's it's probably uh, a loop road um, with one entrance across, was that Plainville Road? And then the other one looping around uh, and probably coming out not a little further south than the existing bad driveway on North Maple. So we would see it as a loop road uh, from uh, one to the other there. Barry, is there anything? Oh, sorry. Um, yes, so one of the things I hear from the seniors here in this building is they like the idea of East Street Common, but there's no way they can afford it. Have you considered building something that's more affordable? But still not in the subsidized category. Yeah, I think, and I'll, I'll answer for you, you can, I mean, always consider it, right? This is a conversation that comes up very often. The, the problem, frankly, is construction costs, right? You just, you'd love to be able to sell something for 300000 but when you're at $300 a square foot for, for just a $400 a square foot for, I would say, a run of the mill, but that's really what you're looking at. It just it makes it difficult, mm -hmm. right? So it's it's not like he's better saying, oh, I'm gonna make a 10% margin on these things, right? But it's, even in, in two families as opposed to single families, where you have the similar shell, if you will. Yeah, and I think it's more than slower. I don't know if I mean we have a couple of relatively street comments. Mm -hmm. Um not they're together. Right. Yeah. Two plus. Two plus. Yeah, that's a, yeah. Uh, we have a couple of those at East Street Commons. Uh, they're a little smaller, uh, but still very expensive to build. You know? Yeah, I was going to say, I was just in Home Depot and a three quarter, three quarter inch four by eight piece of plywood pressure treated is 53 bucks. Mm -hmm. So we feel it every day. <laughs> is the uh, affordable housing? set aside, is that permanent on our roster or are they sunset? Okay. Now, are any of the um, existing structures in this um, outlined area, are any of those being demolished or are you just building around it? We're still looking at the, a possible layout. We've talked some about the existing farmhouse, the old staff farmhouse. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a two family. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe maintaining that. Uh, it needs, I've been through it once very quickly. It needs quite a bit of work, but uh, we might talk about keeping that. The Babs want to keep the two small houses that are closer to 116th. 
Okay. If it's fast to enter, it's their line of control. And I can see that they would be far enough away from the loop road and whatever was built off the loop road. So okay. Maybe just one, I may not answer, just one point for clarification. So we're talking a lot about the map property, but you know, with the map you have in front of you, identifies that whole area. Mm -hmm. And so it would be an overlay district. We're doing this for a couple of reasons. One primarily is to avoid spot zoning. So spot zoning is when you just choose one property and say, we're going to change this zoning to benefit just this property. So, you know, the overlay district that's coming before the town meeting is going to be this entire area from, you know, as we've outlined it here, but particularly for Barry's interest, he's looking at that 30 acres of the back property. Okay. So, because it is an overlay, obviously Venture Way is industrial, I believe, zone. So would it still remain dual zone? Correct. Yeah, they could still avail themselves of the existing zoning district. Okay, so it's not going to eliminate any of the limited industrial areas we have in town by changing this, so this district. Okay. Yeah, and I think that actually, and this is why I brought the point up in a couple of many board meetings ago, but the your bylaw allows existing structures in, in any building district, I believe, to be converted to senior housing. The I'll say problem, but I'll say it loosely is that your senior, your senior housing overlay district bylaw restricts the maximum number of units in a building to four. And so, when you look at some of these existing structures and you say, Oh, this would be great, you just they're not going to change everything just to put four units in, in that structure. So that's a bylaw change as opposed to right. zoning change, yeah. And so, what we're looking to do here is just use the existing uh bylaw provisions and just put it in a new area. So my understanding um, from both of you is that you wanted to come in front of us tonight, mainly for educational purposes. So you're not looking for any vote or anything, but we just- We don't need a vote, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's more interesting if we're going to vote. But if we're on the right track, if we're on the right track, if we come back with something else or the way we should be thinking about this, maybe we want to be sensitive to concerns of open space we want to be you know we want to hear the issues so that we're best prepared when town meeting uh comes in a month and a half yeah and just so you know so they've obviously been in front of the um planning board as stated mm -hmm. and they also came in front of the um, housing and economic development committee mm -hmm. and uh same presentation as well so i know they're not looking for a vote but if the board is willing to I'd be happy to make a motion but I think otherwise we so. sit on it for a week and do our two two meeting Thing. All right. Well, then I'll just speak for myself. I think it's a, uh, a better option than 200 houses being jammed into an area that we had pitched to us in the past. And I think it's the lowest impact on the mm -hmm. feel of Hadley and supports the seniors what we've been looking to do. So that's just my opinion, not the board's. So. Yeah, and I agree with your opinion. Yeah, no, I agree, I agree with agree. that. I agree with that. Yeah. And the question that keeps being asked is, if it's new housing, how are we going to keep students out? And well, over 55 takes care. Well, yeah, there are students, it's over 55. 55. <laughs> but it's not what we speak of as the student population. And I think it, it's, it checks off a lot of the boxes in the, in the, the plans, the housing production plan that you have, and I think the yep. uh, aging dementia friendly plan and downsize, and it provides the support of the kind of condo association where people can downsize and just pay a condo fee to have somebody else sweep and clean and landscape, et cetera. So it seems to check a lot of boxes. So my, I'm 100% in this. My only thought was if we change such a large area that is open space, like if we're talking about like 50 years down the road, do you, is there any currently unforeseen consequences that could arise from us having such a large area dedicated? To over 50 feet? Yeah. Check. Like if something wants to come in in the future, well, like they could still come in in the industrial park, right? Hey, I want to yeah. ask Mr. Dwyer a question or not. Bill, are you there? Yes, sir. Um, Venture Way is zoned industrial. Is that correct? That is correct. And in the industrial zone, residential use is not allowed. Is that correct? Uh, it is not allowed under current zoning, but it would be allowed in the overlay district. Okay, thank you. Just wanted that to be clear to everybody. 
So if I know that Venture Way is having some occupancy issues at the moment, I mean, it might open that up to more sure. housing, just like we've heard from the malls, if the malls yeah. need to do yeah. something else with their Class space. space on Route 9. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think, for a final point on that, Subsequent to this, there may be a need for a zoning amendment to those bylaw provisions to allow additional yes. But, but yes, so mm -hmm. okay. I appreciate your time and um, good luck. I appreciate your time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we'll, Thank you. we'll Thank see you, you at town meeting. Good night, uh, November 14th, date change, right? I believe. You've got that. Yeah. All right, thank you. Um, and we have another guest this evening. We have Mr. Irwin. Is that right? He gave us all his stuff last time. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Tom, you're here to talk to us about paint stewardship. Okay. Okay. I uh, prepared a handout that I referenced this week. Mm -hmm. Is this different than the one you gave us a month and a half ago? Um, I can't be positive if there's going to be some information that okay. overlap, but I just give me surety that when I say end up and it is some of this some of the stuff that we have yeah. in, in our we were, we were yes. and mm -hmm. I was able to quick you know, immediately. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good evening and thank you for this opportunity to speak about the stewardship. Uh, my name is Tom Irwin, as you know, and I'm from Dalton and I'm retired. And uh, I was fortunate in my retirement to want to participate in projects that had the potential to help future generations. So as a member of Dalton Police Management Committee, when it became clear that paint stewardship would begin improving the waste problem that most Massachusetts towns face, save towns money, and possibly impact the climate change problem, I became an advocate for this law. Paint stewardship, as you may know, is a program where unwanted paint can be returned to any participating tank use health care, any day they're open, without a disposal cost, and without regard to where the paint purpose. This program is voluntary for retailers and transfer stations, as you can see on your first handout, for retailers in Vermont freely come and go from the program that suits their business. The cost of consumers is a 75 cent dollar echo fee per gallon of paint and paid at time of purchase. This pays for transportation of the uh, materials to a um, reprocessing plant where the latex is uh, reblended to like new condition and then sold for you know, 50% of the original cost and entities such as uh, that can be managed. The oil based paints are most often used as coal fields and cement plants. As a result, these materials do not end up in land. Even the pails are most often in soft. This program has been working well in 10 states, including our neighboring states of Connecticut, Rhode Island, Maine, Vermont, and New York. And the first four of those are for, have been operating for over a decade. The key benefits to have the experience are first, it's going to be a service to, to a residence without. Notably, roughly 70 to 40 percent of the paint is returned to retailers who are just over the border of Massachusetts and the adjoining states with laws have their paint come from Massachusetts. 40 percent of the paint in those stores return is from Massachusetts. Also, of 932 residents dropping off items that also had to persuade state against off the state, 91 percent of the petitions asking for their legislature to be co-sponsored in this village. This suggests a 91% of happy residents who have unwanted seen in their basement, and likely there are many, would deeply appreciate that. Third, paint stewardship will be a great model for future paint store for future stewardship legislation to address larger items, such as mattresses for paint for everybody, solar panels, packaging, and the upcoming problem of rechargeable lithium batteries for car parts. The resolution that you consider tonight, which is your second handout, or second page you're going about, is consistent with state plans. There's no arm twist. The NMA is the board, right? You know, the moment for your environment and natural resources committee, which is your 
the third page of your hand. The mass CT in the 2030 solid waste management plan calls out EPI in general and EPI in particular as key tools to achieve their goal of zero waste. In fact, this math plan calls for 30% reduction in waste by 2030 and a 90% reduction by 2050. And without stewardship programs, I find it's hard to imagine how we can possibly achieve these goals. Support for this legislation is fortunately very broad. The paint manufacturers and paint retailers who work together with consumers, this was a five-year process of arguing and asking, who come to some conclusion where everybody shrugs at the end of it and says, I can do this. Those folks are supported. Also, support comes from the many percent of the many people with unwanted pain in their basement. The 28 rep and 12 senators from both parties who sponsor the co sponsor we And New York 50 and out for 94 municipalities to date that have passed similar resolutions or endorsement. So, what's next? Legislators have made clear that in order for paint stewardship to receive serious consideration and the support of the leadership of the legislature, in order to make it a fact, municipalities must demonstrate that addressing the solid waste issue, beginning with paint stewardship, is a municipal priority. That's what this resolution will do. In July, 70 percent which represented 27% of the state's population, that means statements of support. This caused the bill to be considered, but did not compel uh, sufficient leadership support to send the bill to the floor for vote. More support was clearly needed. Therefore, with this in mind, and since Hadley residents will appreciate the thought, since this law will save Hadley money, and since reducing waste is critical to our future, I respectfully request that Hadley Select will add their value and work in the future by passing a supportive resolution. <laughs> Thank you for your attention and your consideration as well. Other questions? Sure. Uh, Jane? Um, so in your chart, the first piece of page, yeah. uh, paint retailers involved in the thing. Um, what percentage of that is, how, what percentage of paint retailers are involved? I don't know. That, I, I, don't I mean, that. more than half, less than half? I honestly don't know the number. Okay. So do you know how the process would work? Let's say I go buy a gallon of paint mm -hmm. and I have to pay a surcharge or whatever the name you echo fee of whatever it is. Now, is that can of paint, does it have a, a sticker on it or something that says I can bring back my leftover paint or do I just bring the paint back no matter what? I don't have to have a receipt is basically what I'm asking. You do not have to have a receipt. So okay. pre-purchase. Pardon me for this if you took that same canting to uh, Vermont and put it on the town of Sherwin's up there, they're going to take it back to that property. Okay. So paint purchase previous to this passing would still be accepted. They don't care where you got it. They don't care when you got it. They don't care what state you Okay. So this echo fee, where the, does it mention anything about what this fee is or what this yes. Less than a dollar a gallon, it says. Less than a dollar per gallon. Per, per, per gallon. Per gallon or per, per, per gallon? Well, it's, he said. If you got a lot of gallon of paint, it would be 75 cents. Okay. If you buy five gallons, it's not 375, it's 160. Okay. They're not trying to make money. They're just, uh, they're trying to break even. We should buy a quart. You buy a quart, <laughs> uh, 35 cents, and buy a little bit quart. No. Okay. <laughs> I just, people will want to know. Right. And uh, there's a key schedule that's laid out. I just sell uh, too much information. To them. Sure. Uh, I, I hear you. My you seller know. is begging for this to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's exciting. And in the state of Connecticut, um, the fee over the last 12 years that this state thing has been in place has not changed by one penny. Such as through all the inflation, through all of this, that, and the next thing, it's not changed at all. Yeah. So just playing devil's advocate here on this, but, uh, you know, we talk about affordable housing, we talk about construction costs, we talk about things like that, like we were just talking about our last speaker, you know, 75 cents added on to every gallon of paint, you know, construction costs are already through the roof and 
Yeah, there's what 30% of the, of the municipalities in the state have already signed on to this, but what about the other 70% and the costs associated with that? Uh, although it's great that we recycle and we have the household hazardous waste program, which I think is great and it works. Do we really want to add mandatory fees and costs at the same time we're trying to have affordable housing and programs like that? The two are not really compatible. So I think there has to be a balance here. Yeah, but then I also think about, I mean, how how are people disposing of it today? And there's a cost associated with that, right? So, I mean, if they aren't bearing it in concrete in the Connecticut River... <laughs> you know, you know. So, the preferred way. But then, <laughs> hopefully, they're they're bringing it. If you take the paint to a household hazardous waste day, right. you have to pay for it. Yeah. Right. Well, the town, yeah, the town pays for the what the one or two collections a year that we have. For the them. individuals also pay. Yeah, pay the pay town paints and there's a there's some kind of a fee to, yeah. to get rid of paint. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, I hear what you're saying. I mean, yeah. that's a good point. It's just I don't know what the what the balance is. Well, I right. also think. Um, he answered part of it by saying the five gallon buckets are not the Three per seven, gallon right it's it's a much less rate and most right. most developers do use the larger quantities since they are developers yeah. well, mm -hmm. I, ha I have if a developer has 100 gallons left over they don't have to wait to bring it to the store they can call up and care say hey guy i got 100 gallons and they send a truck over at no cost they put it in the truck the way it goes it saves your contractor. Yeah. Um, typically, what we would do is something like this is is this would be a kind of initial conversation. We take it under advisement. Uh, we'd probably want to. Uh, I'd be interested in getting some feedback from our legislative uh, offices too. You know, because they're they must be familiar with these these bills going through. Get some additional feedback. Is Lindsay Sadadoza your representative? No, we have um, Joe Comerford is our. Uh, she is a uh, she is a post office bill. Yep, and then um, we, we had Dan Carey. Dan Carey. Well, we yeah. still do. We well, still do until January. I don't know. He's been around the courthouse. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. he's already getting ready for his next he job. He had Joe Sikowski the other day, mm -hmm. so yeah. he's still he's still yeah. hanging on. Yeah, but that that's a good idea, Molly. So Give it a week or two. And then I'm assuming you're available if um, we have additional questions sure. before either Very tabling good. it or making a decision. Each one. Yep. Yes. Yeah. All will be getting us off. Okay. And I, I think, you know, comfortably we can plan on putting this either on our, our next, within the next one or two meetings. So we weren't going to, you know, delay it indefinitely. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for all the information. It was a good yes. education. Thank you. Thank you. And a good project, I believe. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And the reason that the other 70% are in the so I haven't visited them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to say that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. So uh, now going back, and we'll just take things in order and knock them off. Um, so I believe we are going back to special town meeting review. Uh, Mike, is there anything we need to look at tonight on the warrant? Or So uh, we're in the same place that we were uh, at the last meeting, and we opted to skip it until we had more numbers. But the only thing that I would like you to discuss just really briefly is whether or not you'd like to say public forum date officially so that we can get posted and get on some calendar and all that. Mm -hmm. It's usually the week before. Yep. So the week before, so we've got the election on yep. Tuesday, right? No. No. Tuesday. So typically, we, we would do the Wednesday or Thursday before. I think. Yes. Mm -hmm. We already have the meeting scheduled on the sixth. In the past, y'all done it where you started an hour earlier, or staggered it so you could do the first half of the hour as the public forum, and then go into your regularly scheduled meeting. And you've also done it where you've met on Wednesday night and then met again immediately on Thursday night for the public forum. I'm fine either way. What's the pleasure of the, the board? As long as it's like a shorter meeting. Yeah, can we stack day? them if it's a shorter meeting for the regular yeah. board meeting? Yeah, that's fine with me. Yeah. So stack them. So we would do it on the 6th. Yes. It's the same night as our select meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but we would start at six. For the forum and then just have a shorter agenda. Is that mm -hmm. what you're saying? 
if possible. That we were not yeah. trying yeah. people I mean, the, the, the in the seventh because the yeah. digital equity yeah. committee yeah. thing when you said it. <laughs> form typically yeah. doesn't take that long. No, it's not. I moved all of their stuff out of the select board's way. I pushed that committee to move stuff around just, just to be safe. Okay, so that one's now. Mm -hmm. Okay, percent. but are we starting at six? Because, uh, Amy, I don't think you can start at five, right? I can start at 515. <laughs> Do you want to compromise in 530? Say 530. 530. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. And yeah. even if we start, I mean, the whole point of the forum is so that people can attend if they want to. So maybe we start our meeting. Start at 5 and Amy comes in. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I, I can get out a few minutes early and get what here for you, 5. What if, you, what if you did your meeting before and then started the forum at 7? That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's okay. Yeah. Go. Yeah, I can do five, five okay. thirty, whatever you guys need. I and can. if we're not done with the business, then we'll put our meeting on hold. Yep. Okay. We'll keep this. Okay, so five o'clock then on November sixth. And the forum starts at you want to start it at seven? Well, I'm gonna start it at six thirty. Uh, six thirty. Six thirty. Perfect. That starts perfect. at 6.30. Thank you. We're not hanging out because we're so efficient. Is that okay with you, Mike? Too? Okay, perfect. Well, okay, so nothing else. Does anybody want to discuss any items on the so board right now? Okay, um, then we have the boards and committee appointments, item 6.1. Jennifer? Um, yeah, okay. Linda Ziegenbein. Um, has applied to serve on the cultural council. I've put her in contact with the council. There are openings on the committees and she has attached her application. I've attached her application here for you. Mm -hmm. um, so I think she would be a, a good fit based off of what she submitted to you all. And she's a Hadley resident. Yes. She's already on another committee. So motion to approve. Second. Motion made by David, seconded by Randy. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you, Linda, for your interest. Picture uh, room. Right. That. Okay. Uh, item six point five. Um, so the board of assessors submitted letters of retirement from Dan Zadonik and Janice Kangas. We heard that earlier. Um, and then Chief, the police department. Oh yes. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we have both of these individuals here on Zoom earlier, but they may have, they may have dropped out on us. Uh, so I have three requests and changes for the uh, communications department. We have one um, one resignation. Uh, Ethan Nedvitt has been a dispatcher with us for about a year now. He did get another job somewhere uh, doing dispatch and uh, has submitted his resignation. We had one vacancy that we have been trying to fill for a while. It's already in the position. Uh, and luckily enough, during our interview process for that position, we were able to find two uh, qualified applicants. So we filled a vacancy that we already had, and we filled each vacancy at the same time. So our two, uh, my two uh, recommendations are Shauna Clark. Shauna has uh, extensive administrator and customer service skills. Gained from working a variety of front desk and office manager positions over the years. And as you know, uh, we always try to look for folks uh, with jobs just like that and uh, you know, customer service and sales in their positions for, for dispatch. She got her interest in joining a public safety team from working the admissions desk at the emergency department at Cooley Dickinson Hospital during the height of COVID. Uh, Amanda LeBlanc. Amanda started her career in customer service and sales, working in uh, fast paced environments, honing her problem solving and multitasking, multitasking skills. More recently, she has worked as a case manager at a substance abuse recovery program, aiding people uh, without judgment during a difficult time and handling confidential information. So I would like to recommend that the board accept Ethan Nesbitt's resignation and that they appoint Sean Clark and Amanda LeBlanc to full-time dispatch positions. So moved. Second. 
Motion made by Amy, seconded by Jean. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And apologies to uh, the two of them if they were on earlier. <laughs> I know I saw at least one of them. <laughs> so, do, sorry about that. Do you want another motion to accept Dan and Janice's re present their retirement oh, as well? Oh, that's right, yeah. Uh, make a motion to accept those retirements as well. Yep, good guess. Uh, motion made by David, seconded by Randy. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for that. Okay, item 6.6, .6, the um, November 5th presidential election warrant. Um, I believe we're being asked to approve this by our town clerk. Second. <laughs> Motion made by Amy, seconded by David. All of those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and then we have uh, three. Yeah. Three APR articles. Um, Jennifer, you want to run through these? Sir? Absolutely. So this is just the first step of uh, potential APR projects. So the MD MDAR is asking for y'all to read the notice of the proposed acquisition here at your meeting. There is an attached statement for a member to read. And then they're also asking for a motion to waive the 120 day uh, notification period, period for each of these projects. So uh, we would need to read the acquisition notice for each one, and then we would need to waive the motion or do the motion to waive the 120 day period. Hmm. Okay, so the first one then is for the Tolper Correct. Family Nominee Trust. And uh, this is where you have to like read the, the in compliance with general law, chapter yes. 7C, section 30. Seven, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts acting by and through its Department of Agricultural Resources, MDAR, the department, uh, hereby gives notice that it proposes to acquire an agricultural preservation restriction, APR, on the real property identified herein for the purposes of protecting in perpetuity its superior and productive agricultural resources by preventing their conversion to other uses. The application received by MDAR indicates that the property is owned by Peter T. Panish, a trustee of the Toppler Family Nominee Trust, and consists of parcel located at uh, Middle Street in Hadley as appropriately re represented on the attached maps. The APR may encompass all or parts of the area shown. The current use of the proper property is uh, primarily for corn and potatoes. Uh, following the recording of the APR, the use of the subject property is limited to agricultural use as more uh, particularly set forth in the APR document, the General Laws Chapter uh, 184, Section 31, and the regulations of the Department, 330 CMR 22 um, at SEC, <laughs> etc. Cetera. Et cetera. Okay. A motion to yeah. the 120 days. So we would need a motion to um, waive the 120 day notification period. A motion to waive the 120 days. Um, Do we need to make a motion with the, to what Amy just read, or yeah. is that just, she just for informational purposes? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'll second Jane's motion. Okay. Uh, motion made by Jane, seconded by Randy. Again, this is relative to the Tolper estate. I just wanted to amend it, right? Because the motion to waive the one uh, should should we read it all the way? The motion, yeah. So the motion would be: I would like to make a motion to waive the one twenty day notification period for APR project name, the Toppler Family Nominee Trust, project ID twenty four C zero eight. Okay. Motion made by Amy. Is there a second? Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the next one is the Margaret Riley. Yep, Riley. Yeah. Uh, Amy, you want to do this one or swap off? Or I got you. <laughs> I got you. Where's this on Bay Road? <laughs> right across from Moody Bridge Road. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so in compliance with General Law Chapter 7C, Section 37, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts acting by and through its Department of Agricultural Resources, 
the department, hereby gives notice that it proposes to acquire an agricultural preservation restriction, APR, on the real property identified herein for the purpose of protecting in perpetuity its superior and productive agricultural resources by preventing their conversion to other uses. The application received by MDAR indicates that the property is owned by Margaret L. Riley and consists of parcels located at uh, 167 Bay Road in Hadley. As approximately represented on the attached maps, the APR may encompass all or parts of the area shown. The current use of the property is primarily for corn and hay. Following the, the recording of the APR, the use of the subject property is limited to agricultural use as more um, particularly set forth in the APR document, the general laws, chapter 184, sections 31, and the regulations of the department, uh, 330 CMR 22.00, exec. Okay. So there's a motion on the table. Second. Well, you have to, have to read it. Oh. Uh, okay, so I'll make a motion to waive the 120-day notification period for the APR project name Margaret L. Riley, project ID number 24C07. Second. All right. Motion <laughs> made by me, seconded by Randy. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Okay. Next. You got a rhythm there, Amy. All right. Um, so... Do you want to say where it is? Sure. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, APR project is the heirs of Joseph T. Kosky. And this parcel is located. In David on, Hill's backyard. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead. One of my backyard, <laughs> one of David's. <laughs> um, so this is off of Knightley Road, 15 and a half acres. All right, so in compliance with General Law Chapter 7C, Section 37, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, acting by and through its Department of Agricultural Resources, the department, hereby gives notice that it proposes to acquire an agricultural preservation restriction, APR, on the real property identified herein for the purposes of protecting in perpetuity its superior and productive agricultural resources by preventing their conversion to other uses. The application received by MDAR indicates that the property is owned uh, by the heirs of Joseph T. Kosky and consists of parcels located at Knightley Road in Hadley as approximately represented on the attached maps. The APR may encompass all or parts of the area shown. The current use of the, proper, uh, of the property is primarily for mixed vegetables. Following the recording of the APR, the use of the subject property is limited to agricultural use as more particularly set forth in the APR document, the General Laws, Chapter 184, Section 31, and the regulations of the department, uh, 330 CMR 22.00, exec. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to waive the 120-day notification period for APR project name, the heirs of Joseph T. Kosky, project ID number 24C05. Second. Motion made by me, seconded by Amy. All those in favor? All right. I have to abstain. I'm working on this project. Yep. Okay. All right. And then um, before we go into executive session, we have the town administrator's report and town project updates. Yes, um, uploaded to your board docs is the TA report. I will go quickly in the interest of time. Anything in blue uh, is new from our last meeting. So obviously the uh, HR director position, we made a recommendation for that tonight. Uh, the positions anticipated for posting, the only changes were what we discussed this evening for the assessor and assistant assessor, as well as the building. As we passed the town meeting and before we discussed the we get post in government. Um, government restructuring committee, Molly and I met with Dow on the 25th. We have a kickoff meeting uh, in person scheduled for October 10th at 5 p.m. We have our committee set uh, and we'll be meeting on that date to uh, move things forward. Um, classification, compensation, success in the plan. The last part, there are two parts left to complete this. One of them is uh, to uh, go over the draft and field policy, uh, have the board review it. 
but also I uh, have a meeting set for either the end of this week or the start of the next where um, the HR manager from the Commons Center will be reaching out to me to uh, discuss the official finalization uh, of that project and anything else that may be uh, outstanding to get done. Uh, CDBG projects, I have been in touch with the program managers and I'm just trying to, I'm still trying to wrap my mind trying to understand what our responsibilities are, but a couple of them are very helpful uh, in that essentially they are handling all of the uh, uploading of data and we still we just have to approve the documents with that as they come in. Uh, nothing's changed in procurement for Russell School Reuse Study. That's going to stay that way, likely being a little there until the end of the year. We're still waiting to say the report last time, we waiting for the final, which should be done on Christmas. Pocketum Cemetery Fence. Um, this is a slight change since I actually typed this and we uploaded it today because I was working on it earlier this afternoon. Um, the building commissioner will be going out to the site with the DPW director. Um, to view the site, which was part of what was discussed with Lisa Mead. Uh, the part that has changed is that we have heard back from their attorney through Lisa, and the uh, the company uh, had is requesting about two weeks to finish up a couple of different jobs that they have going on, and they will be back out to the site to get things moving again, which is really good news. Um, let's see. The levy uh, situation. Uh, I finally heard back from the engineer. This has also changed since I, I did, uh, heard back from the engineer today. He will be sending us their draft final report on this by the end of the month. Uh, I'll be setting up a meeting with them to go over every strike and we need to be able to report back and forth with their, with their final recommendation and their final report. Uh, 234 Middle Street, almost done. Uh, we are almost all set with that project. Uh, and all can be a little bit forward with that. Library roof, the only change in this is that the company hired um, is uh, uh, done, I believe, with their inspection. With the inspection part of it, we'll wait for their final report. And we'll get the report to legal the parties together and start discussing how we're going to resolve that issue. I skipped over the fiber project and then we can write it down here. Um, the update on this is that uh, I've been working with all of the department heads who are uh, going to be benefiting from the fiber project and we get everybody together uh, to have a, a meeting so that everybody is aware of anything <laughs> that the fire chief needs to move this project forward or anything that they need from the fire chief as far as uh, you know, answering any questions and, and steps and things that, that are still outstanding with that question. But as far as I know, we are very close to being completed and having everybody hooked up. That's all I have for you tonight if you have any questions, fire away. Uh, I would just like to say, and I don't have the specifics, but the electric aggregate program is having a presentation at the senior center either this week or next week. <laughs> I can go look it up if you want, but I'd have to leave the meeting. All right. It's called it a senior was, session. That it was when. today. It was today? Oh, did you get to the clock? Three o'clock. <laughs> it was three o'clock today. Sorry about that. All right. So we're right on it here at the senior right. center. Thank you, Sue. Okay. So no questions for Mike? Um, if not, any uh, liaison reports or announcements? No. Excuse me, just got a tickle in my throat. Um, uh, yeah, I'll we'll catch uh, up on announcements at the next meeting. Okay, we're good then? Yep. All right, I'd like to make a motion to enter into executive session pursuant to Mass General Law, blah, 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 um, to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining uh, or litigation, if an open meeting law may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body for the compensation study, the Municipal Employee Union and Firefighter Union, um, executive session minutes, and we will not be reconvening an open session this evening. Second. Okay. Oh, sorry, I lost my place here. 
Okay, so motion made and seconded. Um, as chair of the Hadley Select Board, I state that the board is moved and seconded to enter into executive session. And I state that discussing this matter in open session will have a detrimental impact on the bargaining position of the town of Hadley. Jennifer, can I have a roll call vote? Roll call vote. Hill? Yes. Iser? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Yeah.